Ooh-ha. Ooh-ha. No, Marines. There you go. Is everything up? Yeah, started it. All right, welcome, motherfuckers, to the first session of Mage the Ascension. Y'all motherfuckers need Jesus. Yep. Um, that's not the actual title for the fucking game. Oh. Please don't actually take that as gospel. I just haven't thought of anything better. So, what we're going to run right now is the sort of prelude to the game. Um, Mage the Ascension is a very uh, story-based game. And to start, we're going to begin with essentially the backstories of how you all finally transcend into a mage hood. It transcends a poor word. Oh, man. How you kind of Sense. fall ass for tea kettle screaming into mage hood is a better word. <laughs> all right. I'm going to need a break from work after this. Yeah. So we will begin our session. Oh, boy. We will begin our session at, uh, fuck. I, I remember it was during it. Some we are currently in Portland, Oregon, a large, which a relatively large city, about uh, that lies on the border between Washington and Oregon. It is about ten miles from both the from both the capital of Oregon, and Salem, although it's comically bigger, and frequently has traffic from individuals coming from Washington, typically to buy things like groceries and take advantage of the fact that they are, there's no sale tax in Oregon. Hmm. So you get plenty of traffic. Our story begins, however, on a much more smaller basis. Somewhere in um, somewhere in the more metropolitan area, where there is large high-rise apartments and some, everything of the sort, from buses and trams running through the city, and malls where where dozens of people, where dozens upon dozens upon dozens of people, spend hours shopping away and spending money, spending money. While out on the same street, the homeless beg for change and wander aimlessly. We are starting in one of those buildings. There is a man. He is about six foot two, large, and is very angry, and he is wailing on a door. He is screaming, and the neighbors have locked their doors and have not come out. Nobody has called the police for these kinds of things are unfortunately common, especially in the Tremblay residence. Inside the apartment, there is a scare. There is a scared girl, Jessica Tremblay. Coops. There is a knock. About ten minutes ago, your old boyfriend. What was his name? John. John. Your old boyfriend, well, your ex-boyfriend, rather. John. I come to your door and begin knocking, asking for a second chance, for another, for, a, oh, was hoping for a way to make it up to you, for you to take him back. Obviously, you said no, and he began to get violent. Now he is currently at your door, knocking, and it sounds like he is getting more and more rough. You know for a fact that the doors, that while the doors themselves are rather sturdy, if John makes the attempt, he is strong enough to kick down to kick the door and break the lock. So, while the door itself won't give, the frame around it will. What are you going to do? Alright, do I have a phone in my immediate vicinity? Um, that's entirely up to you. Do you own a cell phone? I do. What kind am... of cell phone? <laughs> God damn it. No, we're determining character here. Is it a, is it a droid? Is it an iPhone? It's just a, one of the more classic uh, humble iPhones. Oh. The humble iPhone. The humble yeah. iPhone. The humble phone. <laughs> so it's the not, iPhone. It's not big so enough to be a brick. Then. Yeah. Meanwhile, meanwhile earlier chicken's, generation. Chicken's character has like a 20 year old Nokia flip phone. Yep. Damn. That's exactly what he has. I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to um, try to call the police. You begin dialing, and you continue to hear the thump, 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 thump of the of John angrily bashing at the door, screaming, "Jessica, let me in!" Screaming unfortunate things about how he's so, ranging between from how he's sorry and how he's going to make you pay for keeping him out. You dial in nine one one. 
and go to a ringtone. And Charlie answers the phone. Man, John's really flip floppy on what he what he wants to say. Tell him, tell him a blue not a one. How can I door. help you? Oh, I'm sorry, nine one one. What's your emergency? There's there's a man at my door, and I think he's going to try and hurt me. All right, ma'am. What is your address? I will I will tell the nine one one office uh, the the nine one one responder my address as I steadily kind of back off into the kitchen where there are chairs that I can use just in case. In case. Yeah, okay, grab a knife. Wait, in case of why would you grab a chair instead of a knife, yeah? <laughs> Because there's a difference between bludgeoning somebody and murdering someone. Yes, but why a, why a chair of all things? Hunt, hunt, please. Okay. So. Anyways, um, where was, oh yeah. The operator, you can hear the sounds of clacking in between John's repeated bashing at the door. And I'm assuming that you're Jessica Tremblay? Yes. All right. I'll have a dispatch. I'll have a dispatch of a police car sent out shortly. Stay, please stay on the phone, ma'am. And with that, there a moment passes, and another, and another. Then all of a sudden, the bash, the knock, the uh, bashing at your door stops. And then there is a much louder sound as you hear wood splinter. And a hinge creak open. Jessica, I just okay. want to talk, Jessica. Jessica's going to grab grab a chair and keep keep holding it, but holding it in front of her on the ground. And and swallow hard. She's she's already crying. And um will she'll go you have beaten open my door. I don't think you just want to talk. That's because you locked me out, baby. I just wanted to talk. Now look <laughs> at what you made me do. Begins walking through your apartment. Begins following, and he will follow the sound of your voice, and he will stand with at his full height in the doorway to your kitchen. Come on, baby. I just want to talk. Put the chair down. The chair is down. It's on the ground, but it's in front of her. Come on. You know I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. You you broke open my door. I'll get it fixed. I promise. I just wanted to make things up to you, Jessica. Look, I understand I haven't been the best boyfriend. But, you know, I get a little angry. I get a little heated. and I'm sorry. How can you promise me that you're going to change? You said this before. You didn't. Jessica, baby, I promise you. He begins taking a few steps forward, holding out, holding out his hands. The relatively small little lady is going to hold the chair tighter and back up a little bit against the counter, ready to push the chair up and try to shove him away with it if he starts getting too close. Jessica, come on. Don't don't make me get angry, Jessica. He begins, continues to walk forward. Just put the chair down. Don't make me get angry. You're always angry. You know, I was trying to make this easy on you, Jessica. He will grab the chair. I would like you to roll a strength roll to attempt to hold on to the chair. Ooh. All right. Oh my. First now. roll of the game. First ah. roll of the game. Yeah. Ah. Nice All right. So you're going to want to take a number of d10s equal to your strength score. All right. Two d10. Yep. And roll them. The difficulty is seven. This will be Whoa. an opposed check. Uh, you're not adding them together. You're looking okay. at each individual die and seeing Oops. what came up on them. Ah, I got I got a five and a seven. All right. So the difficulty for the test was seven, meaning that for every 
every D10 that landed on seven or higher is a success. Now, in this case, this is a contested roll, meaning that you're both comparing how many successes you got. And the individual with more successes than the other is succeeded in this test. Now, because you rolled a five and a seven, and the difficulty <coughs> seven, you got one success. When John rolled his strength, he also got one success. Now, this means you have tied. However, John has a higher strength than you, meaning that he has won this, won this particular test. So, dropping back in again. John reaches out for the chair, and as Jessica tries to pull it away, he yanks violently on it, using his, lar using his uh, higher center of gravity and large amount of, large amount of weight to leverage it out of your hand. He throws it across the room rather violently. Mm. And he has begun to get that, and he has begun to get a look in his eyes that Jessica knows is not going to end. Jessica, sit the fuck down and let's just talk before you make me angry again. Why won't you leave? Just, just get out. Come on. Don't. Jessica. She will begin to back away. Don't you fucking back away from me, Jessica. And he will, and he will take a step forward. And now. He is going to, he is going to be a huge man and take a swing at Jessica. Now what's Ooh, going to happen next? Man is an attack roll. Oh no. So, you're going to take your dex territoire. Yeah. And are you trying, and is Jessica going to try and block the punch? Is she going to try and duck? Duck. All right, so that will be a dexterity plus athletics. All right. This will be another contested right. test. So, because it's in the combat, hmm? this will be a difficulty of six. You should have grabbed the knife, Jessica. I'm not gonna murder somebody. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to murder somebody with a knife. You just gotta stab him. Besides, you could have just grabbed a butter knife. You know those wouldn't help in combat. Just slice him. <laughs> yeah. Just cut him. All over right. Bit. God damn it. Let me think. <laughs> All right. I have no athletic point. Damn it. And what is your dexterity? I got three. All right. Then so. you'll be rolling three d ten. All right. The difficulty will be six. I won two of those out of three. All right, so you okay. got two successes. Now, what is going to happen is that John managed to succeed with a... John managed to get enough successes to succeed. Damn it. Now, what is going to happen is a damage and soak roll. So John is going to take his strength score, uh, take his number of successes and add that together, and that is going to be the number, the number of damage dice he's going to roll. It's going to be a similar roll as to the other contestant. This is going to be bashing damage, which is mm. things like punches, things that won't necessarily kill somebody, but can injure, bruise, or knock them out. Mm. So in other words, no killing a man with one punch? Nope. What? Maybe. Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. Later, no. maybe. Wait no. until the anime. No. <laughs> in order to only... soak this, because you, as a regular human, you can only soak bashing damage. Fortunately, John's fist only counts as bashing unsurprisingly. So what you're going to do next is take your is take your stamina, which uh, according to your sheet is three. Yeah. You're going to roll three dice. The difficulty for this test is six, and it will always be six unless magic gets involved. Mm. And for every success that you get, that will reduce the damage that John deals to you by one. You can you can soak enough to reduce to reduce the damage you take to zero. Understand, mm. however, as a regular human, unless you have a specific merit that you two of these fuckers have, not you two. Okay. Um, you cannot soak things like lethal or aggravate. Lethal is bullets, knives, um, other severe, other severe trauma, and aggravated is things like acid, um, a large angry creature ripping your fucking arm off, fire, uh, <coughs> and certain supernatural creatures take aggravated damage from uh, certain kinds of metal or substances. I'm going to need you to roll your stamina. All right. 3d10. Awesome. Yep. Damn it. I forgot the R. Boom. God damn it. Slash has to be a forehand. Almost. God. Uh, almost. almost. I'm sorry. 
Close, but no Almost. cigar. Yeah, there we go. Damn it. Hey. All right, Jessica will get one success. If Jessica had a specialty for stamina that applied in the situation, that 10 would have counted as two successes. However, in this situation, unfortunately, Jessica does not have. John, however, does. Meaning that John had four successes on his damage roll, which is reduced to three by Jessica's success. So what is now going to happen is that you're going to roll that, go into your sheet, scroll down to your health section, Ooh. and you'll see a, a list from that goes from bruised to incapacitated. You see that? Right. Yeah. All right. So when you click one of these drop downs, you'll get three. You'll have three different icons: a slash, an X, and a like weird fucking asterisk looking. Yeah. So the way that notation is kept for damage is that a slash represents bashing damage, a X represents lethal, and the weird fucking thing represents aggravate. You've taken yeah. three bashing. That means that you're going to turn your bruised, hurt, and injured to bashing. From this point on, you're going to be taking a minus one to all non-soak tests due to the injury that you have to the injury that you have taken. Okay. In other news, your boyfriend's a dick. I don't think dick quite covers it. I got my dark gun. I'm ready. And we'll be in coach. He's an ex-boyfriend. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. Very obviously. Yeah. So, back to game. Or, back to role. John throws out a haymaker and typical like wife beater style fucking trailer park boyfriend and connects right into Jessica's temple. Jessica goes spiraling to the ground and cracks her head on on the linoleum on the linoleum kitchen counter that she was standing next to. Jessica can feel a trickle of blood rolling down her face. What does Jessica do? Oh, shit. It depends. Am I seeing stars? You're getting a headache. That hurt. You can still see see clearly, but that definitely rung your bell. Oh, damn it. You'd probably be startled. All right. I'm going to try to scoot back from, um, from John. All right, so as you scoot back, John begins to slow walk after you. Look at what you made me do, Jessica. Come on. Why do you make me like this, Jessica? I don't want to hurt you. Press X to doubt. Mm. She is going to raise up her hands and touch the trickle of blood and then shakily show it to John as she can, like, with one hand, keeps trying to get back a little bit further. Jessica will eventually uh, come to the end. Uh, her back will bump into the counter. Damn. And as she is running out of space to retreat, and John is slowly walking forward and begins reaching down toward her. What does Jessica do? All right, she tries She tries to scurry out of the way, which would be, uh, would it be another dodge, or? All right, so what you're going to do is attempt to roll another dexterity roll. As All right. Try to dodge out of the way of John. All right. Three, 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 ten. Kachow! Damn it! Kachow! Um. All right. So the way ones work in this system is that the difficulty for this test, by the way, was seven. <laughs> so you have two successes: two, uh, ten, and a seven. You have also, unfortunately, roll the one. Meaning that for every one you roll, you subtract one from your total number of successes. So in this case, because you got two successes and one and a singular one, you have one net success. In the future, if you roll more ones than successes, then that is considered a botch, aka that you're wor you're worse off than when you started in the first place. Fortunately, Jessica rolled a success and John rolled zero. Out of ten, out of tens also special? Tens are also special. If you if you make a test that concerns a certain kind of if you make a test with a attribute or skill, and you have a specialty in either your attribute or ability that matters to this test, then tens count as two successes. Ah, okay. Sweet. Yeah. So Jessica manages to like 
for like on four limbs, scramble out of the way before John can reach out and scrambles out of his way. Bing using her small frame and nimbleness to maneuver around. What does Jessica do next? Uh, bleeding, hit on the head, sobbing. She starts to apologize and cry. But something in her is telling her that she shouldn't. She doesn't need to. She should be sending this guy out of her house. He doesn't he doesn't belong here anymore. He has done enough. Get the knife. Get, get the, the knife. knife. Who is telling me to get the Stab knife? Stab someone. Just a voice in your head. Cut a motherfucker with another motherfucker. I'll cut with the policeman. Take his hand and make him karate chop also, himself. Also, don't go for a knife. Go for a fork and for the balls. Go oh my All right, God. shush. Shush. Okay. Dishonor upon your family. Dishonor upon your line. Dishonor upon your cow. Anyways. <laughs> Not my cow. Not my cow. I love, I love my cow. cow. He's my best friend. <laughs> John begins Fun. to take another step forward, and it looks like he says something. Though, well, at this point, Jessica isn't really hearing it. There is a ringing in Jessica's ear. Uh, feeling. That begins to support Jessica's resist to... Or urge to resist. What does Jessica do? She can't hear him. And, uh... As, as this weird feeling of muffles on ears goes on, she'll start trying to listen in on that weird feeling that she shouldn't be giving into this BS. She'll grab... Rings. Hmm? And a voice rings out. Do, and it is done will, and it is so. <laughs> I will this motherfucker to get out of my house! I pick up another chair! I'm sorry? <laughs> I only no, I'm sorry. sorry. I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> I will I will this motherfucker to get out of my house, and I pick up a chair. Pick up a chair? What does Jessica do with the chair? I, I throw the chair. Alright. Throw the chair at him. Do it. Yeah. In another part of the city, there is a young man. He uh, he's obviously impoverished, Look, care, oh, but he carries himself with a certain amount of dignity and sway, as one might say. He's in his early twenties, and is a man named Adam Bell. He had received a phone call earlier about a job. From one of his other, shall we say, co-workers. Clients. I know what I fucking said, woman. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> About a job. Some mafia type who's looking for extra muscle to back him up on some kind of deal. Looking to, looking to claim all the credit for the job and make himself look more important. Adam will carry will follow the direct the directions he got the address he received via text and show up at an older warehouse uh, seems to be a bit dilapidated a bit obviously hasn't been used in a while in the docks district and once he enters on in he sees a man in a suit uh looks to be of a of uh, I'm sorry not Italian descent uh Irish descent. He the way he speaks is rapid and seem and his accent comes from the not from the aisles. Although he, although he seems to be an educator of some kind. More of a high society type. One of your one of the people that you the person that called you over, a man a man named Rod, uh comes and greets you. Hey Adam, how you doing? Stop. Nope. Guess try and shake hands if he's going to do the handshake thing. Yep. Rod leans into the slap, knuckle bump, all that kind of crazy other fucking shit. The handshake, shall we say. Yes. I'm glad you got my tax, man. Yeah. I was worried you weren't going to show up. Shit. 
So tell me, Mr. what's going on here? Uh, Rod waves over. Hey, Mr. Dunson, I got the last guy. You showed up. The man in the suit looks over. All righty, lad. Excellent. He, The man in the suit walks over, offers out a hand. My name's Martin Dunson. Pleasure to meet you. Eh? Uh, how is he offering his hand? Uh, like a handshake. Okay, then I'll go for the handshake. Wanna go fast? Do you Because I, yeah, I don't want to try and like, you know, try and shake the hand when he wants me to kiss it or some shit like that. Yeah, you you don't know any any Irish etiquette, probably. <laughs> yeah. Just just shake it. The man, the man who calls himself Martin, takes a look at Rod. Will this be all? Will this be all of your uh, compatriots that's coming to join us, lad? Rod will nod. Yeah, that's about it. That was the last guy, but these are the good ones, boss. What are you got us here for, anyways? Martin holds up a finger. Ah, and there lies the basis of our gathering this evening, lad. And he steps in the center, and people begin to gather around him to listen. I am calling you all here today this fun, wonderful evening to offer you all a job opportunity. Each of you will be paid 700. In return, you will accompany me to a deal. The contents of this deal will remain secret. The con and obviously, I am paying you not only for your presence, but for your silence in this matter. Rod, a long-standing compatriot of mine, is assured me that you are all competent individuals and more importantly calm and collected this is the main reason why i've called you all here tonight i expecting i expect professional behavior trigger discipline and calm and cool attitudes gentlemen perform well and you'll receive your payment for seven hours for at most Three hours of work. Questions, gentlemen? No? Excellent. Yeah, I have a question. Where are we going again? Don't worry about that part, lad. Rod knows where we'll be driving. Just another back alley in some part of the city, shall we say. That's not ominous at all. Well, they are criminals. <laughs> I mean, this is obviously some organized crime type of thing. Of course, not a back alley. I thought it was a padlock. <laughs> oh god. I, I, <laughs> so I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell Ben's character anything either. Any type, any nice sayers in the audience? Martin takes a look around. Nobody seems to raise any sort of concern. Does Adam? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Uh, the voice is kind of... Oh. Um, Martin asks if there are any people who would like to turn down the offer. He looks around the crowd, nobody else says anything unless Adam wants to. Uh, he has no objections thus far, so... I'll go nah. with it. Martin and Rod will lead the will lead you and the two other men that he brought along. Two men you don't recognize. They seem to be some they seem to be gangbangers or some uh, Hispanic man and a black man. Although you haven't really gotten a name from them, they haven't really said much any, said much of anything yet. Martin then packs everybody into a car. It looks to be a van of some kind with uh, with a suitcase in the a suitcase that sits next to his driver's seat. When he sits down in the seat, he takes out a pair of handcuffs and cuffs the suitcase or the case or uh, the case to his wrist and then puts the other cuff around the handle. Rod takes the driver's seat and you begin to drive off. Now in another part of the city, while some while there are domestic well, there is a domestic disturbance in one part a residential area and a shame and a deal in the dark amongst the back alleys of the concrete and bricks there is another man a professor he stands before 
a long, he stands before a large chalkboard, something he saw out of a movie, and it tends to work for him as he scribbles down different ideas and is currently writing on a calculation. As he scribbles through, he has a moment of clarity, something he hasn't seen before. Megan's writing more and more, quicker and quicker, as this strange divine inspiration comes to him, as this final piece clicks into place. As he realizes that maybe, maybe his dream is possible. But what he is, what he has been trying to accomplish since the beginning of his career might suddenly come to sense. And maybe this kind of realization can come to other parts of his life. And then, after he is done, when he has burned through about half a box of chalk, there is a clapping from behind him. A golf clap. Very well done, Mr. Cr Dr. Crowd. Oh, Mitch. Hey, that's me. How do you that's pronounce you. your last name? Crow? Crow? Yeah, Crow. Crow. Very well done, Dr. Crow. Uh, thank you, but... Uh... Well, I thank you, but... Who are you exactly? <laughs> you turn Sorry. around and you see a man. And the best way to describe this man is average in every fashion of his. He looks imagine as if you took like every p as you took every image of a like entire city, mashed them together and picked out every single facial feature that would make this man look as average and unnoticeable as possible. His height is average at five foot ten. His weight is average at a rough one hundred and seventy to ninety pounds, shall we say? Not particularly athletic, but not particularly overweight. And he stands up and begins walking over, inspecting your thesis. I, Dr. Carlo, pleasure to meet you. I'm not sure if I've ever heard of you. Uh, what are you a doctor of? The sun. I am a doctor of, bio of biological studies. Ah, well, I'm about to be a doctor of that myself. Excellent. Now, I've been watching you for some time, Mr. Crow. You have been? Well, i sorry, that sounded rather sinister. I've been watching your work. You're a rather interesting individual. Very inspired. I appreciate that. I admire that, even. Oh, you flatter me, don't you? Now that's just flattery. But what brings you here? Well, I had been walking through the building, looking for an associate of mine, and I had saw you scribbling away. I had not realized you were in the building at the time, but I just couldn't help but notice how involved you were in your work. So I just had to come in and see, and you didn't even hear me when I let myself in, so I just tried to stay as quiet as possible so I could uh, interrupt your moment, shall we say. But it seems you've had something of a uh, realization, sir. Oh, yes, 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 I did. And yeah, as, you, as, that mo as you begin remembering that moment, there is that same manic energy that twinges in, in the back of your mind, beats up your heart for a second. It feels like that you could... With, with work, you could find the answer to anything at this moment. Everything, even. In fact, I, I should probably get back to that. I, I don't know how long uh, this inspiration of mine is going to last. Oh, oh, I assure you. You, Mr. Crow, are something of an extraordinary citizen. And I work for an institution that finds extraordinary citizens, as your research seems to tell. And I would like to humbly invite you to my, and there is a knocking at the door, interrupt. Oh, my, um, were you expecting visitors? No. Well, you might be so kind as to let him in and be rude. 
Now I will just and come in. Before you do so, um, you roll me a empathy perception, please. Or perception empathy. Difficulty 8. <laughs> Oh my. Okay, just checking. Okay. <coughs> One success, so that's pretty nice. As you begin, uh, the knock pulls you out of your revelry for a moment, and you begin to realize. This doc, this Dr. Carlo seems, from the moment he walked up and started speaking, you seem to have a sort of arrogance? Arrogance isn't the right word. Confidence. He seemed to be in control of this entire situation, you begin to realize. He seemed confident in the way he acted, the way he spoke to you. And the knocking at the door seemed to have caught him off guard, just for a second. As if this wasn't part of his plan. And that seems to have knocked him off kilter for a second. And as you turn to the door, you and walk over that process in your mind, and you pick that out. So you're a perceptive individual, and you didn't quite realize that until now. Strange. So you walk over and open the door, and there is one of your colleagues, a man that you know as Professor Gailey's, a rather eccentric individual. But brilliant, nonetheless. He was a he is a professor of the of the uh, mechanical engineering. All right. And a rather wild one at that. He was no, he was always an interesting man to talk to, and something of an eccentric, always following strange theories, designs, other peculiarities, shall we say? Ah, Doctor Gailey's, come in, come in. Doctor Crow, wonderful. How are you doing, good sir? Oh. Dr. Dr. Gailey, much like his personality, is a loud, boisterous man. He is not particularly tall and is actually somewhat thin, but he makes up for it in the way he dresses. He dresses in bright colors, even his suit uh, is, a, is a vibrant blue, actually. He, has spe he wears spectacles that seem to just barely balance on the edge of his nose, and he has a large handlebar, handlebar mustache. This man is... Obviously, this man's personality extends to his appearance as well. Mr. Crow, Dr. Crow, it's wonderful to see you, to see you again. Oh, yes. Why don't I yes. step in for a minute? Oh, good. yes, yes, please do. I think I've made a breakthrough. You've wonderful. You have to show me, my good lad. He steps and... on him. Is this marvelous construction your research? Breakthrough as he motions towards the chalkboard and your various notes and diagrams and what. Yes, yes, I'm I'm sorry it's all hastily written down, but I just had so oh, many no, ideas no, at science once. Science waits for no man, my good sir. Science is a beautiful mistress and must be addressed when she comes calling. <laughs> I like this guy. He's a negative murder, isn't he? Yeah, this guy's great. So. I understand you have company, my good, my good lad. And he turns rather dramatically on his heels towards Dr. Carlo. Company. And roll me a, another perception empathy. Difficulty five. This is some, right. something that neither of these men are trying to hide. Okay. Yeah, you Three fucking notice the shit out of this. Three successes. <laughs> Neither of these men are trying to hide, and you can sense the emotion in this room drop through the fucking floor. There is a very obvious intent of violence toward between these men. They are not friends. Both, however, seem to smile. It reminds you more of a lion baring his teeth than a human smiling at it. So, Mist, so Dr. Crow, what is uh, the fine, fine, 
find Dr. Carlo been speaking to you about? Oh, he was just mentioning that he runs a research in institution and might be willing to give me a grant. Really? Is that so, Mr. Carlo? <laughs> Carlo <laughs> looks at him. Are you really going to make this a problem, Gailies? We may have used to been friends, but that's ended a long time ago. Do you really want to start this? Well, Miss Dr. Carter, I can never let such a bright young mind be inducted into the progenitors, as we both know. He's too brilliant, too wonderful for this world to let him be tied down and pulled into your consensus. Look, you... <sighs> Come, Carlo. Come. Look, I don't care what kind of crazy reality deviant sh shit that you're trying to pull here. I don't care about whatever craze crackpot ideas you have stored up. I'm not letting you take the man. He's mine. <laughs> he is going to perform proper works for the good of society and not some madman crackpot ideas trying to play at some sort of modern day steampunk horse shit. Well, well, Dr. Carlo, it seems I've right been past. However, I like a bit of games, shall we say. <coughs> good amount of good sportsmanship. So we can either do battle. <laughs> Do battle? <laughs> do battle, my good lad. Let's, Let's do, do battle. battle. Fashion, for we are two men of learning. Academics. <laughs> God damn it. Can I just get together and start doing a slow fight? As an academic, what? I can say that this is 100% how we resolve our issues. Totally. Or, Mr. Crow, you can choose yourself. Who would you like to come? Who would you like to join? Dr. Carlo and his grant and promise of a lab and research, or I who will nurture and inspire your scientific mind. And then Dr. Carlo chips in. <coughs> Sorry. And Dr. Carlo chips in. He means rave like a lunatic and try to accomplish 1970s pulp era fiction as opposed to real science. Or that, if you want to be such a downer about it. <laughs> Goodness, Jeeves, you're such a dick. Now, Dr. Carlo. Professor Gale <laughs> takes a few steps back and then makes a grand motion between him and Dr. Carlo. Now, Dr. Carlo, you shouldn't dismiss Dr. Gailey's work that simple. Now, anything, any advance would have sound or would have sounded like a work of fiction before it was created. And I've read much of his work. Uh, he could, he's, the thing, if his research pans out, he could revolutionize everything. Dr. Carlo takes a deep sigh. <sighs> Don't tell me you actually believe that Gailey's violent ranting and he's not it's... a scientist. He's a madman. He doesn't perform science. He mashes things together in his garage and Jeff barely even remembers that they're term science theory. You're a scientist, Carl. Which is a respect, a place for your intelligence to flourish. I respect I... you, bro. <laughs> I think you can do great things. Well, I once jammed things together in my garage. <laughs> Please, the less we know about your first time, the better. <sighs> Professor Gailey's raises an eyebrow and looks expectantly. Well, your choice, my lad. 
as he gets this large grin like a cat who has finally caught the mouse. As he look, gives a side glance to Carla. Hello? Um, I would like one moment. Uh, I will be staying. I am very happy where I am with Dr. Gailey, Mr. Carlo. Now, I'm fairly certain there are plenty of other people, all bright, bright minds, who would want to join you. Sadly, none as bright as you. Oh my. So, and you're about to Takes a look at Gailey's. Dr. Carlo, you're trying to excuse me. <laughs> well, okay, at least. Well, Dr. Carlo, are you going to be a sore sport about it? Carlo takes a sigh. Well, fortunately for you, I've already emptied the school building. Random personnel. So, shall we dance? And he takes out a, takes out a little container. Like a little fancy, like, 1920s pill container. Crack, pops it open. There was a pill in his mouth and swallows. Oh, shit. He cracks oh. his neck. Oh, and Gailey takes a few steps back. Oh, bugger. And he oh. pulls out a piece of... Something that looks about to be like a copper pen. Clicks a button on it and it extends into about two foot long strange device with, with uh, appears like trode, like electric trodes and wires coming off of it and begins sparkling alive and energy. As lightning begins lancing off of it. Well, Dr. Carlo, if you're going to be such a sp poor sport about it. And I'm uh, going to take a few steps backwards. Because <laughs> things are getting freaky. Mm. Yeah. Just the way you like it. out the electro whip, you know it's about to get kinky. Ugh. It's more of a rod. <laughs> <laughs> is, this, is this rod vibrating? <laughs> <laughs> Hit him with your rod, Gailey. Do it. God damn it. It will surely bring him to his knees. God damn it. And now they <laughs> dance. <laughs> and now they dance the dance, the dance of death. So, the dance of science. we will again pull back from this part of the city and go to another. Hey. Where we have academia. Where we have academics. We have unfortunate women stuck in their apartments and criminals. We also have other people, more law-abiding citizens, more society, the hard ones. And we have a young man. Doesn't appear to be all that mid-twenties, working as a waiter. Table, table, watching people come and go, staring longingly at the who's up on the stage playing jazz and other. And this young man sees a group of jewels walk. Strange man, looked to be thought of some kind. Take a table. They stay there. The group. You keep cutting out, Connor. Your yeah. fucking face. There we go. Do. Much better. And the men that the strange moralized elements take a seat at the table and they wait 10, 20, 30 minutes before another say, group shows up. I was going to say, is this one of my tables? Shush. Before <laughs> another group of men show up. It is a man in a suit. A Irish looking man, red headed, and four other men accompanying him. These four seem to be more class society. More rough and tumble individuals. The man in the suit seems to be educated. Walks prim and proper and has a certain enunciation to his voice. He takes a seat. And they appear to talk for a while. You take their orders and they 
conversation seems to stop when you come around. And once you bring them the food, the conversation again stops. It becomes quiet and hushed. They spend time. They don't really touch their food. Air around them seems to be tense. Many of the waiters back away. The young man, however, seems somewhat undeterred by this. He's made of stronger stuff than his co A customer is a customer, and a customer needs to be helped. And as his night begins to wind to a close, there is a slamming on the table as a man gets up angry. There is arguments. And then, what can be described as hell breaking loose as a as one of the men, the first man that came to the table, pulls a gun. People begin to clear out. Most people begin to run. Another man, uh, a Hispanic looking man, pulls a gun, shoots him, and then the leader of the first group gets up, lifts him with one hand, and tears him in half with his bare hands. Well, shit. Shit. I was. Okay, at that moment, I was probably on the phone with the local police station. Being explaining the situation. Trying to dial and dial and dial. The man comes apart as the phone, as the man comes apart and the other man's hands. <laughs> there is a phone call. And then it goes to dial as the sick. Strange. Adam Bell. Yes. We're sitting at this table listening to these men. So it seems to be some sort of drug deal and whatnot. And the leader of the men that you came to visit seems to be of pale skin. Strange individual. Doesn't really doesn't at all touch his food. It has a strange sort of predatory feel as you stand around him. He also What's even obviously... stranger is that we've uh, that we've somehow went to Applebee's instead of this back alley. Yeah. Hey, hey. This is a well-established piano bar. Thank you. Yeah, Applebee's. Thank you very much. <laughs> Applebee's does not have pianos. Thank you. It could. <laughs> it should. It, it could, but they're not classy enough. Anyway. Anyway. Yay! Olive Garden, then. So. You, you watch this argument slowly break out now. Uh, eventually... A man pulls a gun. You're not entirely sure, but somebody pulls a gun. Then another man pulls a gun. The uh, Mexican man that you came here with. Yes. He shoots the fir- he shoots the other man with a gun. You're not entirely sure who pulled first. More of a Han situation. Yes. All you do know, however, is that the leader of the other group then gets up, snarling, furious, picks up, bodily picks up the me- the Mexican man, and then tears him in half. Like grabs him by the- by the shoulder. By the thigh and pulls until the screaming stops. Like, oh, I, was gonna say, right here. I was gonna say, like a piece of paper. As he starts to lose his fucking shit, snarling and screaming, although no real words are coming out, it's more of just like angry animal sounds. Yes. Wow. As he begins losing his fucking shit, he whips the table across the room. Which, by the way, looked to weigh about like forty pounds, and was screwed into the floor. Jesus. Okay. You better not hurt that piano. <laughs> uh, the men that came with him die. Start diving for the fuck. Start diving for cover, running the fuck away. As this man begins moving, inhumanly fast. Well. I think it probably be a good idea to die for cover too. I'm I'm currently assisting. I'm currently trying to get as many people out of here as possible. Most of the people have already seemed to have started running. Um, well, I, I assumed that, but I'm also trying to keep it like calm so no one's getting trampled over anything. So, while well, a man splits another man, it was also half. fortunately near the closing of the night, so really the only people left were the employees. The only people actually that are actually present in the building right now is another waiter, the bartender, and a, that was about it actually. You know, there's cook, some cooks in the ki- kitchen. I was going to say no manager. Probably. We don't have a manager on duty right now. Um, no, unfortunately. Um, sir, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. <laughs> you are causing <laughs> <laughs> scuffle. You're, you're causing a scuffle. You're getting my tables dirty. Uh, right. I, I just ask you to leave. 
<laughs> do not do not make me play this piano. I will do so if I have to. Sing us the song. All right. So, but I'm assist. I'm basically getting the rest of the employees and the cooks out of here. <clears throat> Everybody started fucking running the moment that guns came out. Leonard had I'm the good sense to like dive for cover because well, Leonard Leonard is calmer under fire, unlike most people. Well, look, I'm I'm a forensic pathologist, and while I don't have training in the Moving field, on. I do understand yeah. the situation. Moving on. So, Moving on. Adam Bell, uh, Rod begins yes. to run towards you, uh, grabbing the grabbing the, your mutual employer Martin by the by the by the wrist as he begins waving his hand for you to come. Come on, let's get the fuck out of here, Adam. I don't the fuck. God, fire, fuck, run. <laughs> Yeah, run towards the door then. While watching my back simultaneously. Um, <laughs> you start running towards the door, and then you hear, a, and then you hear a shout as something whizzes by your head at fucking speed, and you watch Rod splatter against the door in front of you. Have you ever seen? Have you ever <laughs> seen Deadpool? And you remember the scene where the guy goes fucking splattering at the beginning of the movie onto the fucking billboards on the fucking sign. Uh, it's that I, kind of yeah, effect. I've not seen Deadpool, but I could kind of get the idea. Like, he hits the wall with a horrible crunch and a wet, meaty sound, and he seems to just kind of stick there. Basically, he just turns into a tomato. Pretty much. Like, like what would happen if someone were to get hit by a car going 80 miles an hour, except that person is going Yeah, that's why I said a tomato. Sweet. Yes. And you turn around instinctively, and you see <laughs> Martin uh, being set upon by the large unfortunately angry man and he stumbles to the ground just barely manages to duck it out of the way enough that he gets whiffed by the man by the uh raging man's fist but not not full contact and he stumbles to the ground and as the man descends on him to tear martin apart there is a gargling sound that comes from the man as he as martin pushes him off the scuffle seems to have ended and he falls to the ground, limp and lifeless, as there is a piece, as there is a piece of a table leg sticking out of his chest. Ooh. Fuck, 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 fuck. I don't, what the fuck your name was? We're getting out of here. Points at you. I'm, I'm, I'm getting each of their faces memorized as much as I can for a police lineup. And for the authorities. Yeah. And the worst part, officer, they didn't even tip me. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't even eat their food. That so, so as we begin to run, Martin starts taking you toward. Start. Martin runs with Adam towards the car. Um, Martin gets into the passengers to the uh, passenger seat. Presumably, Adam gets in the drive. Correct. Well. Clearly, a guy with a table like it is a uh, his chest can't drive. So, yeah, <laughs> that's racist. Um, or was that Martin though? didn't get a table leg through this cha- through his chest. Martin, Martin was the man put... who put the table leg through the uh, fucking crazy berserker man's chest. Well, either way, condition to drive. Oh, he seems perfectly fine, actually. Oh. A little fucking shaken, <laughs> terrified, but. None the worse for wear. Is someone Although mowing the lawn outside? Bit. He pulls out his phone, begins mumbling something. He seems to be flipping the fuck out as he begins to drive. Well, you know, to figure out how to drive that. Someone. <laughs> Tutorial time! Yay! You like back Move. out, smash into somebody behind you, take off. Move the left stick to turn. Fuck, lad! Don't you know how to drive a goddamn car? You push down on the pedal, right? Oh, <laughs> fucking Jesus almighty. <laughs> Pull in the fucking alley and I'll drive myself. Fuck! The fuck do I pay you? I will try and do a left turn into the alley. You take out a, you take out a stop sign as you turn. <laughs> Switches. So tires. beautiful. What about my bar? <laughs> What about your bar? You left me in a mess. I heard and, you dead bodies. 
begins and as he begins driving he is kind of driving with one hand and with his cuffed hand is using it to operate a cell phone and he makes a couple calls and none of them seem to end well from the way he's reacting well i guess i get to look out so look and out. eventually he will start another call and we will follow this call part of the city and while we have dealt mostly with the criminals and the lower members of the economic structure of america we now approach a more well-bred man, a gentleman, an academic, a purveyor of wonderful arts and musics, of fine, of finer things in life. As he begins to get ready for bed, his phone rings. Don't. Oh, what? Uh, I think this is you. Oh, sorry, I kind of, yeah, kind of blacked out there for a moment. What happened? <laughs> um, <laughs> Sawyer is about to get ready for his bed, bed, and he receives a phone, and his phone begins to ring. For his bed. Get to sleep. Sawyer is getting ready to go the fuck to sleep. Oh. His phone ring. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what? My Your cell God. phone. Well, he, uh, well, Sawyer will, uh, of course, stop his evening routine of, you know, flossing his teeth twice, then brushing them again. Twice. And go out of his uh, <laughs> dedicated uh, teeth cleaning part of his bathroom and go get his phone, which is next to his bed. It is, uh, you read the caller ID, and it is your uh, quote-unquote uncle, Martin Dunsing. Huh. How curious. <laughs> no, I will, of course, answer. How curious. <laughs> no, I will, of course, answer, because well, he's, he's, he's basically family. Hmm. He's <laughs> a family friend. You're not sure if he actually is related to you. Maybe no, I'm, fairly, marriage, sure he, I'm fairly sure he isn't. He's, uh... Distant, long thing. He, However, he you're not this... entirely sure, since he, you seem no, to be mostly married. No, family he, he and... likes the he likes the the good looks of the family. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe no, he's not really. He's not a millionaire. Would know if he was a millionaire. Anyway, you remember yeah, no, where no, you, Sawyer, you remember Sawyer how will, he was? Sawyer will accept the call. He's one of go... those far-off families, like yes. the Giovannis or the Putinescas. Yes. So Sawyer will the accept personal. the call. So I will accept a call and go, Uncle Martin. It's rather late for a call. Hey, Sawyer! How you doing? Oh, the, just getting ready to call it a day. Look, I'm real sorry about this, and I know it's putting upon you, but you're, uh, <laughs> you're staying in Portland, right? Oh, yes, yes. I'm on a, uh, I'm visiting a, a convention. For the next two days. Why? Really? Um. All right. I, it, this is embarrassing to talk about, but I'm here on some business from my job, and I ran into uh, some of the passionate members of society, and I, I, well, simply put, I got mugged, and I don't have my wallet. I don't have any of my credit cards or anything. I already canceled all of that when I managed to get to a phone. Called the police, but I won't have anywhere to stay for them. Oh dear God, are you all right? <laughs> Bit roughed up, but nothing bad, nothing major. Just maybe a bruise or two. And well, my pride mostly was injured. You know how it works. Yes, well, uh, but, uh, of course. Just tell me where, tell me where you are, and I will pick you up immediately. I, I I'm actually in my car right now. They didn't, they fortunately, weren't able to take my keys. <laughs> Couldn't find them. I had them shoved up my butt. <laughs> what? <laughs> I have to... I am, I'm more than happy about this whole keypad thing on cars. That being said, I had this uncomfortable piece of metal shoved up my ass for three years. <laughs> Damn it. It was in there for three whole hours. Yeah. <clears throat> so if, if you don't mind, I. You're staying at your usual place, right? Well, well, yeah, I'm at the uh, hotel. 
I don't know what that is. I don't know any hotels in Portland. Sounds French. Is that it a doesn't matter. Is there a four seasons at the piano bar? Is there a four seasons also there? Mm -hmm. There's a four seasons there, that's where I'm staying. Sure. Fine. There's no for a rich fuck. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm at, the, I'm at the Chateau Rich Fuck in <laughs> Chateau Rich Fuck. In more money in the more money than sense of in you. Yeah, yeah, I, I know the place. <laughs> Yeah, so, no, anyway, I'll tell them the name of my ho of the hotel I'm staying in, and, <laughs> well, guess that's it for an early evening. <sighs> hey, wait, wait, Connor. Yeah? Is this, like, like, what year is this in? Modern day. Okay, did, did, Trump, did, did Trump win? Yes. Unfortunately. Okay, <laughs> then, sorry, we'll just mumble. Well, welcome to Trump's America. <laughs> Trump's America. Uh. Ooh, no one gets to, t to turn in early in Trump's America. <laughs> because you get mucked all the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, guess we should. Guess we should try and throw more guns at the problem. Yeah, yeah, that Sometime works. later, a car rolls up to the entrance to the front of the building, yes, well, and I... Martin turns to his to his companion. All right, Adam, was it right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right. Here's my fucking number. I'm going to stay the night up there. I will pay you fucking double to stay in that alleyway on the other side of the fucking place. And call me if anyone that you saw from that fucking place or anyone else that looks fucking suspicious comes out. All right? I'll pay you fucking double. All right, but I have a question. What? The fuck? What happened back there? Pay you fucking triple if you don't ask me that fucking question again. <laughs> can I? Okay. Can I? Can I just? Can I just come down the stairs right then and there? Let's just say, Mister Adam, that winners do do drop, shall we say? Leave it at that. All right. Awesome. Any Adam not or rather? Sure, why not? So, anyways, um, I think you should still ask more questions. What's the worst that could happen? Yeah, Martin gets out, hands off, uh, tells the fucking valet to park it somewhere. I'm assuming Adam gets that. Yes. And Martin <laughs> walks into the main walks into the uh, main hall I will, or the reception I, area. I will where, wait there near the counter. Where, and yeah, worst Sawyer will just in time come down to meet him. Yes, I put on a I put on a suit and tie because of course I did. Sawyer. Oh, Martin. Ah, so glad you're okay. How you doing? Well, a, a bit, a uh, bit ruffled. I was about Look, to go. I'm to very bed. sorry for. I'm very sorry for doing this to you at such a horrible hour. Oh no 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 don't no no problem. Let's let's uh, go upstairs. I will uh we will have a drink and you can tell me all about what happened. You're too kind. <laughs> You're too kind to give me a drink that's not technically yours but the hotel's. <laughs> oh my god. Um anyways. And so Martin will head up. Um, unless there's any particular conversation that Sawyer wants to have with Martin. Well, no, I didn't see didn't see Ban's character, so I don't really have any questions right now. Not yet, shall we say? Yeah. The, the moment I see him, I will ask him who his rough and tumble acquaintances. Friend. <laughs> some well, unfortunate, you didn't some see unfortunate, him yet, shall we say. No, some um, unfortunate youth that is being helped by a local politician, no doubt. Oh, um that that was uh Adam. Yes. Adam. No, I didn't I didn't see him. Oh yeah. <laughs> Fuck. I'm sorry. I'm I'm tired and hungover. Uh Aww. still Aww. getting together. Don't worry about it. Uh where was I? Oh yeah. Fucking on the ball today. Poor dude. Hey, yep. About this time <laughs> we will return back to a scene that we were Young man named Lenny, who saw 
pretty much a war zone breakout in the middle of his work. Oh, man. Back to me again. <sighs> Leonard will then get a call sometime uh, not long after the police not long after the call out the police comes that he needs to show up to his job post fucking haste oh, well obviously um <laughs> i mean i'm gonna do as much as i can to kind of clean up make sure like the store is locked up as much as possible I the would just... bar is locked up as much as possible i would call in sick i'd quit obviously obviously double check the piano i I'd, I'd literally just quit and move. Double, yeah. double check my double check my you know my child the piano. <laughs> your child seems to have gone out just fine. Okay, uh, good. This is not, then... by the way, this is not your fucking like, uh, fuck. This is not your waiter job that's calling you to come in. This is your police job. Oh, like, yeah. Some shit just went down at a place. You need to show up. That I was obviously a part of. Of course, I'm gonna be there. Um. Eventually. The police, the police will actually show up. I mean, um, yeah. one of the first responders you actually recognize a a man named Stevens. Hi, Stevens. Walks on in as the first responding officer. Holy fuck! Yeah, you're telling me, Steven. You have Steven. the worst luck, don't you, Leo? <sighs> At least my baby made it out just fine. Your baby? I don't know. The, the piano. Oh. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Anyways. Um, uh, Look, so I care I just... a lot about that piano. All right. Eventually, some other police will show up, and they will establish a police, we'll establish a police tape off the area. All right. So, Leonard, as the first responding officer, I need to take your statement. What did you yeah. see happen? Uh, let's see. Uh. First off, a man pulled out a gun. Uh, another man pulled out a gun. Uh, then a dude went berserk. One of, the, and then another dude went berserk and ripped a man in half with his bare hands. Bullshit. And then, Plausible. Point at corpse. <laughs> and then another, and then another man uh, stabbed said berserker dude with a wooden table leg and i will point to the i will point to the table that is clearly missing a leg and the man that has a table leg shoved through him holy fuck and they both, and they both took off also there was a red-headed irish dude uh didn't really seem all that involved in the fight but he he seemed like he was, part, irish, the, he was part, part of the that... group but he didn't get involved Red... in the fight the red-headed Irish dude, by the way, was the guy who put the table leg into that dude's chest. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that was Ban's character. Nope. nope. There was another. Well, there was another dude. The that, there was another dude that was part of the group, but he didn't seem like he was involved in the fight, and he took off with them. Uh, he drove pretty terribly down the street. Let, let me tell you. That explains the public damage. Anyways, um, and I know do you need my like job a ride is... back to the station, man? Uh, I mean, I've got my car out back, and I gotta go. Apparently, I'm being called in to work this case anyway at the lab. Uh, jeez, I can't imagine why. So, I mean, if you want to give me a ride, that's fine. Someone's gonna have to take me home afterwards. Uh, no, dude, if you got your car, it'd be easy. For you. Yeah. Change too. Anyways, we'll be here, and I'm sure you'll be back shortly. <laughs> so, oh, wait. probably. Wait, so, so oh, wait. joy. You clock out as at the piano bar. You drive to the police station, clock in there, drive back to the piano bar <laughs> to work your other <laughs> job. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be an perfect. easier way. <laughs> Look, do I need to stay and collect evidence now, or do they just want me back? Actually, I'm probably not one of the field workers i'm just in the lab that's all i do um you're like a technician you like go out and get like the great big great and dirty stuff like you're a forensic like you haven't specified your forensics field so i'm assuming you work in, in like the fucking morgue well it's forensic pathology remember so you work in the morgue um so yeah, yeah you're like the guy who handles the dead body 
with the person who gets paid more than you, who actually does all the important work. Yeah, pretty much. I'm just a paid intern. Lucky. It paid. does ex yeah. it does explain why I'm like unconcerned with the dead bodies. Hey hey Zephy. What? Don't forget to bring a mirror so you can ask the only question who is still there. Like the only witness, I mean. Yeah. Har That's har. Ha! Ha ha! So. All the other. Oh. Even all the other workers went home. Obviously, I'm just trying to get them out as quickly as possible. Right. We'll take their statement later. That's fine. I'm sure they'll be back at work. No, actually, a lot of them will probably call in sick. I'll probably get work double time. Or we'll be closed for a while. Who knows? Yay! I'm not the manager, so it's honestly not my call. Yay. Um. Anyways. So, I'll see you. Go get changed. So... I'll be still be here. That's fine. Go, you get to play with dead bodies, aren't you excited? Oh, <laughs> sure. Yeah, poke around those dead bodies, yeah. So, look, look, I'd rather be playing that piano up there, but, you know. Not as you keep telling me, seriously, dead bodies, get... you're in the wrong field of work. Seriously, though, Leonard, get the fuck to work. Yeah, 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 I know. I'm gonna go don't, to my car. My lab coat is probably... I probably got my lab coat in there. Well, and, as procedure know. goes, you'll end up driving to the police station, meeting the... The head mortician. Uh, driving down there, collecting the bodies, and bring them back. Not a whole lot happens there. Although it is rather gruesome. You now know what, it lo what a man looks like when he's uh, torn in half. Uh, hey, on the other hand, on the other hand, this makes the uh, this makes a mortician's job very. My statement makes a mortician's job very easy. Man, I wonder how we working died. next to him. <laughs> yeah. He asked it's me. Like freaking so, Sub Zero walked into a bar. Must have had a heart attack. That sounds yeah. like a really bad joke. Yeah, something yeah, attacked his heart. It was probably a wooden table leg. <laughs> so, anyways, yeah. uh, you collect all the bodies. Um, after they've, after like everybody's taken their pictures and all the analysis analysis has been brought in, you collect all the corpses and bring them into the morgue for examination. The man yeah. that you work for, the head mortician, the guy who shows up to do all the proper autopsies. <laughs> I just did the prep work. Yep. He is a... He actually has grown to trust you as, like, his... Essentially, like, primary assistant. So whenever he begins working on bodies, he will have you. And typically, they hand him tools, uh, get second... Like, work I'm as a the, second pair of eyes. I'm the only one with hands as skilled as his. Mm. If you know what I mean. If you have to say so yourself. No, I play piano. My hands have a natural grace to them. I play piano too. That don't mean shit about how graceful my hands are. Yes. Insert masturbation joke here. <laughs> Anyways, um, his name, as you know, is William. William. An older man in his mid in his mid fifties, relatively dignified and. Otherwise, fairly polite. Not super, He's never been super excited to do his job, but it's kind of a good thing that he's not super excited to do his job. I mean, like, no yeah, one's yeah, ever super does. excited to roll around in dead bodies. Yeah. That being said, he is a man deserving of respect. Light, professional. Always make sure he get always, uh, always gets his work done, et cetera, et cetera. And has been something of a mentor towards you, especially getting you used to your new job. He was there the first couple of times that you threw up after digging around some dude's torso. <laughs> I mean, and, I probably didn't do that much throwing up because my mother was a doctor. Just because doesn't your mean, doesn't mean that you does, I mean, yeah. Yeah. But, gross, Seffy. It's gross. It is gross, yes. You don't just stop becoming immune to these things. You have to take some. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you gotta become desensitized. Yeah. Yep. Yay, PTSD. Anyways. <laughs> Let's see. William, head mortician. Uh, job. Mentor. Okay, that's, that's knocked down. Got it. Alright. So. 
what I'm gonna have you do is, well, he begins to work on like the really major bodies. Um, he will have you also have you begin the different corpses, and I would like you to roll your. Let's see. Why do you keep flipping? This is not what I want. I hate this. I believe you have the forensics pathology science skill, correct? Uh, I do. I have three. I'd like you to roll that plus your intelligence. Um. So how do I do that? So I'm I'm confused on this. Damn it, woman. <laughs> so how does so how does this work? So I roll so you, six. You take your intelligence, right. add that to your pathology skill, and you roll that many d tens. Oh, okay. So I just roll six d tens. Yep. Okay. Difficulty of six. It's not hard to tell how these people. Um, I was there. <laughs> so roll, motherfucker. Three, three, six, nine, four, six, five. Two out of six. Well, I could have explained this multiple times. Okay. There you go. So you got two successes. Yeah. It's... It was one thing to see it. It's another thing to actually see it. It is, in fact, true. This man physically picked them up, tore them apart with his bare hands. You can see the bruising where his hands lent, the exact part where the skin tore, organs split open. Man, Doc, this does not look good. Surprise, surprise. These men are dead as fuck. Except for the two, except for the man who got shot. <laughs> Went out lucky. He, yeah, he, he got the least out of all of this. So, after all that is said and done, both you and William begin to inspect the man with the stake in his chest, the supposed crazed the berserker. Bers the berserker. The question is how he had the strength to rip a man in half with his bare hands, Doc. That would be the question. I am expecting some kind of new drug. <sighs> Doc I mean, pulling out various medical tools, syringes. All right, I so, mean, he, Zephy, he just he just snapped from a, a normal person to just ripping a man in half. Curious, sir, and curious, sir. Isn't it, Larry? Said oh, I yes. Forgetting her grammar. All right, so the way this is going to work is that normally what would happen is that you would end up assisting this man because you were the PC and the story's fucks around you. Um, what's yep. going to happen is that he'll roll a <laughs> assistance test for your pathology. So, the number of successes he gets add to the well, add to your die pool inspection of the <laughs> Totally. Um, That's totally how that works. So, basically he's just going to add to the successes that I got from yes, the last because role. you're the folk because you're a main character in the story, you're the focus of it. You will begin it. You'll be the one and holy shit, you will add eight dice to your die pool. Nice. So what is going to happen is that since you have more, this is going to bring your dice pool up to 18. Instead of that yeah. happening, what is going to happen is that this is a difficulty 7 dice. You're going to have 10 dice. And because you have more dice over 10, you're going to reduce the difficulty by 4. So this will only be a difficulty 3 test and be rolling dice. I assume that he is... <sighs> Flavor-wise, he's probably using this as a tool to teach me since I was there for this, so I kind of know where to go from here. He's asking mostly leading questions. He is doing yeah. his own autopsy, and I'm rolling to see what you get, depending on the okay. information that you're working. So I... So I roll... Roll, roll your fucking die pool. And we'll figure out what happens after this. Uh, I... 10d10, difficulty 3. Okay, Dang. got it. William got, a sh got like eight successes. <laughs> all um, right all then. So, like I said before, ones cancel out successes. Yeah. Oh, we got an exceptional success. So that's five. So yeah, you got eight successes. Yeah. 
Fuck. Ooh. What's gonna work? Teamwork. What's gonna work? Teamwork. So as you two begin doing doing various analysis of the body, um, you begin to realize very, very, very strange things. Um, as you examine, as you like examine how he died, so obviously I had to do with something fucking wooden stake in his chest, which you'll examine later. Um, however, otherwise, his body appears to be dead. Like, he has been dead for a very long time. Like, Fuck. all biological processes have ceased. His organs have begun to atrophy. Um, everything except the brain and the heart seem to have atrophied to the point of death. Um, uh... Once you begin examining his blood, there is no actual foreign objects in his blood. However, every single one of his cells are or what? He has sickle cell, except it's not most of his blood cells. It's all of his blood cells. This man shouldn't be alive. He really um, He has not. far more blood in his system. Once you begin poking down to it, he has far more blood cells in his system than is healthy for a human being. What, as you, know you begin what? to like, take this needle out and put it into a tray, it comes out thicker, almost like a syrup, as you begin to work with the blood sample. I'm going to... Something is very wrong with this man. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that Leo has read enough comic books. At this point, to be like, uh, Jock, uh, I th think we just have like an actual vampire here because this man should have not been alive when he was moving about. So you six mean to tell ago. me, Leonard, that you think we have a vampire? I look. It's the only it's mythical the first creature just that. showed up on our doorstep and began and killed like a billion, a hundred, not a billion, Jesus, killed like four people in a bar. Uh, look at how long the insides of this body have been dead. <coughs> this man was ripping people <laughs> in half with his bare hands, not four hours ago. Look, I won't deny that it's a sp suspicious circumstance. However, from what I've seen from the use of chemical enhancers and uh, combat drugs, this is entirely possible that he was on some sort of maybe even military-grade combat enhancement. Obviously, uh, it was lethal to him. Uh, just that it's just that a, st a piece of wood through the chest killed him before the chemicals did. Whatever was whatever made him strong enough to do the things he did obviously had a very severe toll on his body. Uh, chemicals or no, I feel like the body should not have been alive for this long. He, he shouldn't... He... Most of what we're seeing could very well be just the hyper... Could just be a hyper-stimulation of the metabolism. And his body slowly begin to, beginning to eat any sort of high-calorie high intake that it can cook from itself. You can see it in the atrophy. You can see it in the lining of the stomach, viscera, uh, the blood itself as it began to eat plasma... As it began to eat the blood plasma... Is what there we're, a mirror? What we're dealing with is essentially what could be like the suit, like the Superman version of caffeine. Weirdly enough, I want to just take like a quick glance, real quick. Is there a mirror around? There's a mirror. Is it showing a reflection of the body? Oh yeah, totally. Okay, cool. Just wanted to make sure on that one. Oh well, yeah, he totally shows up in the mirror. Okay, well, you know. Don't forget to put the mirror next to his mouth so you can see if he's still alive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, whatever the, look, whatever the case may be, uh, this is some strange stuff, Doc. I'm not going to argue with you there. However, if this is what I think it is, we need to end up reporting this to the FBI. I, I think we need to do more than just report it to the FBI. What? I feel like I feel like this goes. No, oh, never mind. I don't know. I'm probably just. Oh, I'm probably just tired from working. Yeah, sure. And Anyways, being in stressful situations. Get the forceps. I'm gonna take the piece of wood out of his chest to figure out what condition his heart was in. Forceps. He begins pry the. He begins prying the fact open. Takes out a scalpel. Winds the. Winds the. Pulls it out. Well, now we know how Zevi's gonna die. Forceps? 
pulls it out, puts it, put hands it to you, and as you turn around to put it down, you're gasping from William, and you turn around and you see the man slowly begin to rise back up from the table, sitting up, Fucking looking gorgeous. somewhat groggy. Oh, oh, oh. steak! <laughs> Just stabbing the man with a steak. <laughs> <laughs> Dead bodies are supposed to be dead. That's what. I, I think that's the first yeah. thing you learn when you work in a morgue. When the body starts moving, <laughs> stab him. Yeah. That, you that get back on that table. <laughs> that's a thing that just happened. You get All right. Back on that what table, you're going sir. to form is a dexterity melee attack. <laughs> I'm okay. alive, Chris Flat. <laughs> you can back that on the table, three seconds. sir. No. Okay. Uh, so do I just roll dexterity? Yep. If you do not have melee, then it's just flat dexterity. This will be difficulty eight as you're trying to form a very difficult called shot. I do not have melee. Then you're just rolling your dexterity. Yeah. Oh, shit. I hope he steps and sucked. <laughs> Uh, okay. 10, 6, Ooh. 8, 10. Wow. 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 Did you get back on that table, sir? <laughs> I'm sorry. You're supposed wow. to be dead. <laughs> you did eat your croissant. Dead. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't eat your croissant, bitch. You should have um... eaten my food. <laughs> Wow. Well done. <laughs> I fucking nearly got this guy. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm impressed. Close. So just at the last second, as he noticed, as he was like groggily getting up, he just out of the corner of his eyes notices you about, literally about like inches from plunging this fucking thing into his chest and whips his hand in front and the stake stabs into his hand and he twists his wrist and pulls it from your hand. That's not, that's not very nice, kid. Picks you up by your shirt and physically throws you across the room. Ow. Um, hey, guys, I'm already dead. Uh, see you next week. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do is you're going to take bashing damage. So you're going right. to roll your stamina to soak. Oh, man, my stamina. <laughs> ah, I got decent stamina. stamina. I, got, I got decent stamina. See how well he threw you into the wall? Oh, just out the door. Eight, no, five, into the fuck. He threw you into a wall. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought you he said you into out the wall. wall. Can't you throw him at the piano so it breaks? Wow, you're no, such a meanie. There's throw. no piano in the morgue. <laughs> you think I just keep? I, you think I just keep another piano in there? Well, can... if there are no pianos yeah. in the morgue, then how are you gonna play the dirges? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, but like, you didn't think of that one, huh? Questions. I pull out my bagpipes. That's how. <laughs> I just want him. I just want him to throw you across the town into the Vienna. <laughs> Too much to Just ask. all the way into my into my beautiful into my beautiful beautiful grand piano, baby. Yeah, is that too much to ask? Yes. A apparently. <laughs> okay. All right. You're anyway, going to take. Uh, let's see. You're going to take six bashing damage. Uh, okay, so what? I go to incapacitated? Uh, no, you go to crippled. Oh. oh, shit. No, not my hands. You're not, <laughs> like, happening. dying. Okay. Um, which one is that? Is that yeah, the first thing? Yes, that's a single slash. You. We're like okay. one and a half hours in, and he's already in a, wheel, in a wheelchair. Uh, what? <laughs> Dang it. So he, you get flung against the wall, and you smash your head into. You can feel blood running down the back of your skull. So, unfortunately, freely, as you begin seeing stars in your, you can feel that you are more than slightly concussed. In like what, the, in what, fluctuates between double and quintuple vision. <laughs> you watch as William gasps in terror as he is picked up by the throat. And the man looks to what has to be 
bites him on the neck. And right. William sputters, seizures, and then goes limp. Oh, great. And... Head mortician, no? <laughs> you got a raise. Woo, promotion. <laughs> yeah, that's how the happen. ground. Good thing you're already in the morgue. You hear <laughs> footsteps as you black out as you black out for just a second. Echoing footsteps. Here's. And there's this strange ears. Probably nope. Pain <laughs> nope. Going dark. And you bob him again. Bob out. Seems to almost be close to you. Well, he's at a slope. <laughs> And it's hard to tell exactly what's going on. Thing, time seems to be strange. Wait, wait, am I being dragged? No. Oh. At least you don't think you are. And you feel a net, and you feel something grab your shirt and begin to lift. Back out again. You're this being time, quiet. You I keep cutting go. out again, Connor. You fucking sluts. <laughs> that's more like it. Yeah, that's... There's that anger and rage that I expect from Connor. Yep, yeah. that's the and we, can... we know and love. Fading out. Fading back in, fading out, and as he begins walking towards you, he picks you up by the shirt. You fade out again. Okay. And this time, you hear something. Is it William? Back Not from the dead? William. Surprise, motherfuckers. No. Mm, okay. You hear a voice. Well... Looks like you're fucked. <laughs> no. Might wanna, you think? Uh, might want to do something about it, Chief. I. Uh, what do you expect me to do about it? I expect you to die. <laughs> <laughs> then well, perish. Well, Chief. Pretty simple. You could do something about it yourself. You got the cojones. <sighs> Who do, I look like? Who do I look like? Doctor Strange? Well, if you want to be, I mean... <sighs> I mean... End of the day, do you want to make it out of here alive? I mean, kinda. Also, high voice in my head. <laughs> don't worry, I'm your conscience. We don't talk very often. <laughs> <laughs> really? I thought we had lengthy conversations about what I wanted to be in life. Uh, not my problem, kid. Uh, it, that's a different conscience, then. Okay. Not even your I'm actually important. You. The other one's just a voice in your head because you're nuts. So I'm going to call you Bartholomew, and I'm going to call my regular one Connie. That's nice, kid. Oh, so, presumably, you you'd rather not die, right? Yeah. Well, you should probably do something about that. <sighs> Is the steak still around? You're still blacked out. Oh, am I, oh I'm still blacked yeah. out. Um, so, okay. simple, simple piece of advice for you, kid. You can do anything. That's what my mom always told me. So I became a forensics pathologist. That mom just owned like, me. Fucking alcoholic anonymous or whatever the shit. <laughs> they said I could be anything, so I became a just forensic get, pathologist. Just got wanted enough. Well, it's not exactly want, it's will. Remember, kid. Will, and it will be so. You snap back. Your vision uh, goes clear just long enough. Uh, what does Leonard do? Uh, will, and it will be so. Will, and it will be so. Ah, is the guy still there, or is he gone? Um, as time seems to slow down for a second, as you feel your, as you can feel your eyes dilate, you're being picked up by your shirt, being pulled off your feet. Oh, this is gonna smart. He, the man, his mouth out of his mouth is dribbling blood as his chin runs red. He's, Wait. And his canines have turned into like these horrible 
vicious fangs. Is it okay? So this is this is not the dude. This is not William. This is the other dude. No, William's dead in the fucking corner. Look, I I figured we we're dealing with vampires at first, so I figured William will so, be back eventually. What does Leonard do? A, I want him. Kick him in the dick. To get <laughs> away. I want him. I want him to get away from both me and William. No. What does Leonard do? Is the stake still there? Or is it still in his hand? You can feel where the... You can... You, can, you know the stake is there. If you want it to be. Ooh. Ooh. <sighs> Clearly the stake has been raised. More than uh -huh. anything... I want that stake to go through his heart. But since I'm away from it, it's just a moment of thinking of just like, I wish... Oh, I wish I could cast mage hand like in D&D &D and then just shove the stake through his heart. <laughs> you fucking nerd! From behind. You Remember, kid, roll a one. it's not about what you wish, it's about what you will. <sighs> yeah, I wish I wish I was a fish. Use the goddamn just, force. I'm gonna, I'm gonna reach out for it, and then like will it to come toward, and then like will it to like fly at his back and stab him through the back in the heart. There is a strange feeling you get, a sort of flipping of your stomach. Except it's not really flipping, more as it's doing like acrobatic fucking purees and <laughs> <laughs> Throw up on the vampire. As <laughs> space almost for a second seems to stretch. And we're going to pull away. And <laughs> find another member of the city. Zephy hey. died dead. Zephy died dead. <laughs> I, I died attempting to use the force. Yeah, because it was a stupid idea. <laughs> Yeah, never missed. Yeah, that's not how the force works. Like next session, we will have guy try to try to throw a stake at me, like through my heart from the back. Of course, that wouldn't work. What an idiot! Duh. <laughs> like, what did you think this was? Star Wars? <laughs> what do you think I was? So, a vampire? We're going to pull to a, another. So, last but certainly not the least, a large, fit man. Obviously, attained his physicality through hard work. He's a hardworking man. Another unrepresented nation of society. Uh, working class. He, as some might say, is a garbage man. Although he doesn't garbage hate his man. job. Garbage although he doesn't love his job, he certainly doesn't hate it either. He works hard, and, that's, and he believes that that's the best thing in life. And it seems that today is a Tuesday, garbage day, aka a day to make his rounds. Garbage day. Garbage. <laughs> garbage so, day. Oh boy. <laughs> and as he drives his truck, the various er, suburban areas, he spots near the end of his shift. She seems to be on, wondering aimlessly, confused. Wait, what he stops and talks to a tree. She continues to wander around, seems terrified of fence. These other strange occurrences happening. As she seems to be walking around daydream. You kept cutting, cutting out there a bit. I think I got the jitch. The, the my fucking guide. Though. I'm gonna punch my mic in the dick. <laughs> punch it twice for me. Do it. Anyway, um. So you see a fucking woman wandering around. She's pissing any ass off. It's about like 11 p.m. You're literally at the end of your shift. Collected all your uh, fucking stuff. They're actually I... driving a truck to head home at the end of it all. And you see this woman wandering. She seems to be in early 20s. Like, very young 20s. She is wandering around somewhat aimlessly. She seems to stop, talk to a bush. 
have an argument with the fence. Other strange things she's doing. It's like she was almost in her own hallucination. Seems rather defensive about it. Uh-huh. Roll me a perception. All right, perception. Or an alertness, rather. Alertness, perception. Right. Right, let's see where we get that. Um, doop, 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 doop. What the fuck was it? Perception is all the way to the right, and then alertness is the first thing under talents. All right, thank you. I have... Looks like you've only got a, only two perception and no alertness. So you're going to pick up 2d10. Alrighty. And roll me a difficulty 7. Uh, a difficulty what? Difficulty seven. 7 test. Alrighty. So, shit. What exactly do I roll here? 2d10? Yeah, just 2d10. 2D10. Right. I got 2 and a 6. Alright, so you don't notice anything in particular. What nope. does... Robert, do. Right. Robert will uh, observe the woman for a little bit, but the more he just watches her walk around aimlessly like that, talking to inanimate objects, the more worried he gets. Making sure that his keys and, uh, and his phone are both in his pocket, he stops his truck, gets out, and uh, calmly approaches uh, uh, the woman. She seems to be... Sorry, continue. No, you go ahead. She seems to be thoroughly out of her mind. Um, although she hasn't really noticed you yet. You walk up to her, although you haven't really interacted with her. What do you do? I, uh, I... I don't reach out for her just yet, but I do address her. I say, <laughs> excuse me, ma'am. Uh, are you alright? Uh, do, do you need, uh, do you need to, uh, to... Do you need How to about- get home? Nothing. Respond. She seems to be staring at some sky. Robert looks up at the sky, kind of, uh, can, uh, kind of a little weirded out. And then he's Roll me another reading. perception. Right. Time Difficulty going. five. Right. So that's another two d ten, right? Yeah. You too get attacked by a vampire. Hey, I again don't says. notice shit. You notice on the woman herself. There's nothing in the sky fucking clouds but you notice um what you didn't notice this before but now being up close there is actually like blood caking down the side of his face and some kind of cut on her temple oh shit Mm, hello hello indeed bob immediately uh, reaches for his uh, for his phone and uh dials uh dials 911 (coughs) Nine on one. What's your emergency? Uh, hi. Um, I have I have a delirious woman here. She's got uh, she's got a cut on her head. Uh, she's walking around. She doesn't seem to notice me. Uh, I am at and I say the street. Uh, the street. Herman Herm. Herm Herm. Herman Herm Street. <laughs> I'm, at, I'm at garbage. <laughs> one, two, three, four. Her, I'm at Cookie Monster Street. I'm at. All right. There's an ambulance <laughs> on on the way, sir. Could you? Stay in the line with me while, until the ambulance arrives? Sure thing. Could you try and have the woman lie down on her back? Mm. Make sure her make sure she's make sure her head face she's facing upwards. Make sure she's breathing making make sure that she's still able to breathe well. I'll do my best. To just knock her out of a two by I... four. <laughs> no. Um uh, gently and softly. I reach out and I touch the woman's shoulder. Yeah, excuse me, ma'am. Jessica. Hello. World, you the last thing you remember was throwing. Well, the last normal you have is throwing a chair at your boy, at your ex, John. Yeah. The world seemed to slow down and speed up at the same time. Colors became vibrant and mysteries became ventures. Walk the hall. What could have been either just a single second or multiple eternities seem to have passed since. Then. Walk the halls of Grand Fay Lords. You've seen bubbles and form into dragons and rainbows and all kinds of other shit. At the same time, you've also seen <coughs> creatures lurk. You're cutting out a lot. Oh my fucking god! 
Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. It's not your fault. Yeah. You're not talking loud enough. That's the problem. Yeah. You're fucking. You're fucking just, mum. Just, just go into Discord and put the mic gain a bit higher. That's what I'm fucking doing. Nice. Do it again. Oh! Hi, dragons! Coming from bubbles, lots of weird ass creatures emerging from the shadows. Hey! Oh, like, really, really strange LSD trip is really the best way to describe it. So, you hit your ex you hit your ex boyfriend with a chair, and then you took drugs and you stumbled into an alley. <laughs> <You're> terrible. <laughs> and then. <laughs> and then. You're the greatest hero this world needs. Yep. So that's what you are. Shut <laughs> Alright. Anyways. And then you feel a brush on your shoulder, and then the world seems to influx all at once as it go as it drains down into a hole in the earth. And you're in an alley. You smell the exhaust from a see the bricks and the concrete. There's somebody touching your shoulder. All right. All right, all right. I flinch back because Throw holy shit. Throw a chair. <laughs> There's no chair to throw. In a chair, throw it. Shush, role play. As you flinch back, uh, Robert is going, uh, is going to remove his hand. It's okay, it's okay. I'm not going to hurt you. I, are you okay, ma'am? Can, can you hear me? She turns and, and looks at Bob with very large, terrified eyes. There are tear stains on her cheeks along with the smear of blood. She does not look okay, and she does not look very comfortable at all. I... 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 What? Where am I? You're in Burr Street. Uh... <laughs> I just, I just found you wandering around here. Uh, hey, do you think I, uh, could I get you to, uh, to sit down? I just called an ambulance. They'll be here not too long. An ambulance? Are you kidding? That's so expensive. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna look around for a bit, as kind of frantically, as if she's expecting to see to see John again somewhere emerging from the shadows or the clouds of exhaust coming and seeping into the alley. Who, but, but she's not going to sit down just yet. She's, who, who are you? What, if you don't mind. My name, my name is Robert Baumeister. I'm just the garbage man. It's okay, ma'am. I'm just a humble gar garbage man. <laughs> she's... <laughs> She's gonna blink and uh, start kind of uh, wringing her hands as she takes a step back and slowly starts to try to sit down. It's a little bit clumsy. She just got out of what she thought was like one, like writing through the the books that her uncle would give her. Robert will reach out and uh, help her get down. And then he's, uh, he seemingly seems to remember something goes, oh, hey, hey, wait on a second. And then he takes off his jacket and drapes it around her shoulders. There you go. Uh, can you tell me what happened to you? Do you remember? She's going to visibly sink inside of this jacket, as it is huge compared to her tiny body. Oh, yeah. I mean, Robert seems like he could, uh, he could, he could be smuggling boats underneath that thing. <laughs> he, probably, he probably does. <laughs> Smuggled the schooner all the way across America. Dirty boat smuggler. <laughs> anyway. She he got... Is, she's gonna he found it in a pile of garbage. Nice. Duh. She's gonna look at him and then kind of reach up and touch the, the bloody temple and then flinch back and look at the blood. He... He came... He came home and... He, he just I I don't I don't know I I think I threw something and I can't quite remember This will concern Robert He was never he was never very happy about the thought of women being abused by uh, by anyone close to them 
he will frown and he will uh, he will sit down with uh, with her at um, a respectful distance, making yes. sure that she doesn't feel threatened by him. It's okay, ma'am. Whoever, uh, whoever it was, he's not going. Uh, he's not going to get to you. I can promise you that. <laughs> uh, sure. And she's going to kind of curl up, just bring her knees to her chest and hug them very tight. As uh, she starts to cry again, but not like openly sobbing, just tears running down her face. Aww. He's gonna reach out and he's gonna he's gonna pat her back and uh, and stroke it and comfort her as much as he can without you know bursting her personal bubble. <laughs> you pat her back. He <laughs> flinches again. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Look, if uh, you're gonna uh, you're gonna be okay. Can you can you tell me can you tell me your name, ma'am? It's it's Jessica Tremblay. It's nice to meet you. It's real nice to meet you too, Jessica. Don't worry, the ambulance is gonna be here in just a few moments. If anyone <laughs> tries to get to you, they're gonna have to go for me first. Thank you. Ugh. She's going to kind of continue to kind of keep a, a little bit away from from Bob, Bob the uh, garbage man. <laughs> as she tries desperately to recount exactly what what the hell happened after she threw the chair and tried to occasionally glance up and try to look at the world around her just to make sure John isn't slow stepping out of there with his casual voice going, come on! <laughs> Like I wouldn't hear. <laughs> you were talking shit. <laughs> Look what you made me do. You made you made me hit myself with a chair leg. Yeah, seriously. Meanwhile, Bob finds himself at a bit of an impasse. He wants to comfort this lady, and he wants her to, uh, to uh, stay calm and still. But at the same time, his first aid kit is in the truck, and he does uh, and he wants to help her with that uh, with that cut on her head too. Let me gently caress your face with my garbage hands. <laughs> garbage hands. Ugh. Garbage hands. <laughs> at least take <laughs> at least take your work gloves off. Garbage. Get that garbage magic flowing. No, that would. The work gloves are already in the, uh, in the truck. Ooh, ooh Connor, Connor. Uh, how far was is a uh, hmm, street from from Jessica's place? <laughs> Not entirely sure. You haven't been in this part of town before. <laughs> Damn it! Where's my dog? My dog. My dog. Where's my dog at? My dog. Where's my bear? Oh. I don't know how I got here. It's okay. It's uh, it's not a bad pl uh, it's not a bad um, uh, neighborhood. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Besides, we're gonna be getting you back to uh, to where you came from. No, no, is this? He he might still be there. He might he he might be he might be waiting, and she'll steadily start to get more and more distressed as she thinks of the thought of entering her house and seeing John there again, waiting for her. Oh hey hey, uh, it's okay. It's quiet down. Right. Keep, uh, keep keep calm. It's okay. We're not going to take you back to it uh, to any place. You're going to be at risk. You're going to be safe. I promise you that. I don't. I don't know how I ran away. I don't. All I can remember is just throwing the chair, and and then everything exploded in my brain and. I think I might be concussed. Yeah, you hit your head pretty. Uh, you hit you hit your head pretty hard there. I didn't hit my head at all. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh shit! <laughs> Things are kicking off. Somebody else did. She was not saying that. You're concussed. It's implied. In any case, it doesn't it doesn't matter how you got here. What matters is 
You got away from the bastard who did this to you. I, I'd say it. It might. It might matter a, a little bit how I got here. I. I don't know where I am, and uh, I. I don't think I've. Uh, I've ever been to this part of town before. Was I just walking? Well, I found you wandering around, so it's a possibility. There is a ringing that comes from the cabin of... What was your character's name? Robert. Of Robert's van. Truck, rather. A cell phone. Oops. Robert's cell phone. Uh, I had that in my pocket, though. Well, it's coming from your pocket, then. Fuck you. I pick up. Quite, uh, quite quickly, actually. Yep. Um, when you check the I when you check the caller ID for a second, it's done. Oh shit! It's my buddy. It's done. It's your bud. It's your boy. I your boy. Up, and, I'm, it's uh, your and I uh, I pick it up and I go, oh hey Don. Um, it's not uh, it's not exactly the best time right now. Uh, what's up? Hey. Um. All right. This is gonna sound weird, but you're with uh. With a lady, right? Um, some chick named Jessica, I think. It was. Bob looks with a uh, with a frown to uh, to his side. He goes, "Yeah, uh, what what's up with that? What what's, All right, what's the this matter? is gonna sound really weird. I don't quite get it all myself yet, but could you, you take see? Jessica to?" Could you take Jessica somewhere? Um, yeah, I could. Uh, any particular place you get in mind? I mean, what's going on? I'm gonna text. I'll text you the address. Um, um apparently is, uh... she needs to meet a guy named Jeff. Uh, hang on a second. Jeff, Bob Jeff, will Jeff, turn. Jeff, uh, Jeff, will Jeff. turn to Jessica. Hey, do Hi, you know? Uh, do you know a guy called Jeff? He's gonna blink. Oh, my uncle? Oh, okay. Uh, apparently your uncle wants to meet you. Uh, I can take you there in my truck. It's okay. Jeff, that's... everybody's uncle. Oh, that's... That, that doesn't sound suspicious he's, at he's all. He's a nice guy. That's, <laughs> that's fine, I, I, I guess. Alright. She, she seems a little bit more at ease now, though, because her and Jeff got a good relationship. He's a real friendly guy. Jeff. This is a good thing. Jeff. Jeff's Jeff. a good guy. Jeff. He's a good guy. <laughs> I kind of, uh, okay, I kind of oh. don't know how uh, how he got the number of uh, of uh, my friend Dawn, but apparently he wants uh, he wants you to meet up. Do you think Do you think you can stand? Y yeah, I, th I if I walked all this way, I I think I can stand. Thank you. Yeah. Does not take any risks, though. Immediately he smiles and uh, <laughs> he smiles and stands up and reaches out a hand to help her. She's very hesitant at his big old muscular murder hand. It just kind of uses the wall <laughs> behind her to kind of scoot up. Alrighty, he walks her to uh, to the truck, making sure to support her, making sure that she doesn't fall over or anything, and Ooh. he even opens the door for her. Uh, careful, it's a, it's a bit of a high step. Have you hung up your phone yet? My my phone? Uh, my phone? No, not yet. Right. <laughs> so I turn back. Uh, I turn back to Dawn. So what's up with all this anyway, Dawn? Um, all right. I, I I don't quite get it all. I have a friend named Lena. Lena. Lena Wallace. Uh, she is going to meet you at the address with this guy named Jeff. Apparently she's friends with this Jeff guy, and she asked me to get you guys there. All uh, right. Well, apparently apparently Jeff... something important. Apparently they need to talk about something. Apparently this Jeff guy is uh, this uh, this Jessica woman's uncle. So me sounds just about right. Cool. Anyways, um, yeah. I, I yeah. don't quite get it either. Um, anyways, <laughs> uh, I'm going to order pizza when you get back. Do you want uh, pepperoni and bacon? Oh, hell yeah. You know what I like. Oh, pizza. 
All right, see you. She'll hang up. And Bob will uh, put the phone in his pocket and get back into the truck. Make sure Jessica. that Jessica is, uh, she, uh, is secure with seatbelts and everything and sitting comfortably and then start uh, yes. start up the truck and wait for the text with the directions. <laughs> Jessica! 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 We will again transition to another part of the city. So, Coops. What up? I have like a little dart pistol that was that I just had in my hand for whatever reason. I dropped it. The dart went off and hit me right in the head. Oh my god! <laughs> yes, yes, you're dead now. Yes, you're dead. You're gonna you're gonna wake up to have superpowers, Zephy. No. Just like, just like all huddled up in this dude's random ass dude's be jacket. Getting hit in the head by a by a nerf dart. And getting superpowers from that would be the shittiest fucking origin story ever. <laughs> I, I can I can just shoot nerf darts out of my hand, just a Nerfed million darts. of them at a time. Just bury people in them. Oh, by the way, inside the um, in in the glove compartment of the of the truck, Jessica will be able to see at least two of. Uh, <laughs> uh, I want to say kind of crappy um, <laughs> fantasy novels. <laughs> Jessica, just reach into the glove compartment, pass the rope and the duct tape, and get me my double. <laughs> yeah. Well, you do. So anyways, if, we're going if you to would, move. You would find duct tape in there, and also a first aid kit. Perform a transition to another part of the city. As oh boy! Some people's stories are not yet done. Oh boy! We will again join the young man by the name. Yes. Name. Things have gone black. Okay. The... Level okay. Shot. Which, Which young one? man? <laughs> yeah, the... you cut out there. No one. Hunter. You fucking oh, punch. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> A young man named you Silence. We were confused. Fuck. <laughs> Anyways, so, Leonard. Yes. Leo. Yeah. Leon. Everything goes black. And for a while, you're not sure how long. Perception time is weird. But you eventually start waking up to the rumbling of an engine. Car engine. And you have a splitting headache. Ow. Ow. Begin Ow. Rolling awake and your headache fades and you can and the bleariness leaves your eyes. You're in the passenger seat of a car. Yeah. Uh... Oh, a driving car. Not not an ambulance, a car. A car. Yeah. Ah, a car. A car in who's, motion. A uh, car. I'm sorry? Why am I in a car? You're in a car. Why am I in a car? Uh, because you were put in a car. Yeah, I'm, I'm asking the person next to me, why am I in a car? If there is a person, I assume somebody's driving. Yep. Uh, you look over, and there appears to be a man of Asianic, uh, mid forties. <sighs> Mr. Miyagi, is that you? Racist. Mr. Mi ha -ha. Mr. Miyagi was fine. Ha ha ha, kid. Nice to meet you. My name's Jeff. He holds oh. out a hand. Doesn't look, take his eyes off the road, but extends his right hand. Sure, I'll shake his hand. It's probably bloody. Surprisingly, no. Oh, am I doing, clean? Kid? Oh, well, I got a splitting headache, and I think I just m may have, may have, or may not have murdered a vampire who just, you know, put me as the head mortician because he killed the other one. Oh, well, you're on one hell of a trip. Well, oh, I. Man. Sorry to tell you this, kid, but you may have to find a different job. Are you kidding me? I can't find a different job. That's a paid internship. They know where I am. <laughs> this it's is going to be a long story. Look, I got some other people I need to pick up real fast. I got a couple of friends who are working on the whole... I'll explain it when I got all you guys. Okay? Um, okay. Me. I'm your local okay. wizard. Uh, I mean... It, it, can I at least go back to my college classes and find a different internship? 
We'll deal sure. with that later, okay? I'm pretty sure that the police are going to be keen to talk to me anyway. We'll deal with all that later, okay? Okay. What's up uh, for the time? You got some Tylenol. Actually, you got some Advil, Tylenol, whatever's going to make this headache yeah, go away. Yeah, the box. Uh, I look in the glove box. Uh, there's some fucking pills. Okay. Uh, pills here. Get your pills here. <laughs> I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take the recommended dosage. You pop two pills in your mouth and swallow. Eventually, your headache will start going away. A little bit. Uh, so uh, where are we going? All right, we're going to go meet some other people. So before, so shit's gonna get kind of crazy in a bit. Here's my question. Does he sound like the other conscious that was telling me to... Fuck no. Will and it will be done? Fuck no. Oh, okay. Just just wanted to double check. Totally not. Yeah, no, he's a dude. Uh, so anyways, kid. Bam. So shit's yeah. about to get kind of crazy in about... Uh, he looks at his watch. 17 minutes, 51 seconds, 50 seconds, 49 seconds, 48 seconds. Uh, anyways. Just about good crazy shortly. So if you got any questions, you might want to ask them now. Um, first question. Um, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm not a question. Are you kidnapping? Uh, Second question. Are you kidnapping me? Well, I'm not kidnapping you. Although I'm not going to slow down if you want to jump out of the car. I got places to be. Uh, third question. Uh. Am I a Jedi? That'd be super cool if you were a Jedi, kid. <laughs> I hope you are. <laughs> because I'm pretty sure I just tried to stab a vampire by using the Force. Well, it wasn't the Force per se, although it might be. Sorry. <laughs> If nothing else, it's an excellent metaphor. Mm. Yeah, let's, sure. Uh, sure, let's go with metaphor. Yeah, that sounds yeah. good. Fourth, are we about to go meet some person known as the Ancient One, or I don't know, like the old mystic? I don't I don't even know. My head is still hurting quite a bit. Well, Tewksbury is pretty old, but I don't think he's called the Ancient One. That'd be kind of insulting, really. Oh. oh, ancient one. I'm only 53. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so, let's sound a bitch. Oh, I, I don't think he's been, been called an here. ancient one. Uh, oh, okay. Can he tell me? Uh, also, number number four. Are vampires real? Because I came real. For me. Oh, they're super real, kid. Oh, thanks. That's what I need in my life right now. Yeah, you didn't just kill some random dude. And <laughs> some random vampire. Totally I mean, different. vampires are super real, kid. Although that was a totally normal dude, and you just actually killed that man. Like, cold blood. <laughs> okay. You're just super high right now. Sappy, ask if that is sparkly kind or the cool kind. <laughs> no. They were clearly the cool kind, because you ripped a man in half. That doesn't... Could still be sparkly. Um... Yeah. Another question. No, 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 no. Alright, shut the fuck up. Zephy's role playing. Another question. Who are you? Uh, like I said, my name is Jeff. Oh. Full name Jeffrey Daisuke Ito. Pleasure to meet you. Oh, oh great. Name? I love you too. What? Daisuke. I don't know. My head Daisuke. still hurts. Not Daisuke. Look, my head still hurts. I'm sorry. Anyways. <laughs> There's a reason why I prefer people to call me Jeff. Anyway. <laughs> no, I get it. That's a reason I prefer people to call me Leo and not Leonard. I don't know. Leonard's a pretty cool name. Anyways. Uh, he checks his watch again. All right. We'll be there. Well, we're going to be arriving in four minutes. But crazy shit's going to kick off. <sighs> seven minutes and 58 seconds. 57 seconds, 56 seconds, 55 seconds. Did you grab seconds. did you grab my phone and my iPad? Um I grabbed whatever was in your pockets because they were in your pockets. 
Okay, well, that would have been my phone, but did you grab my bag? It's no. at the police station. Okay, never mind then. Uh, did you need something from your bag? No, I just, uh, I can do it on my iPhone. That's fine. And I'm just going to open up Hearthstone on my iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> I, Nerd. I like it. You have your priorities set straight. Back in my day, <laughs> back in my day, we just did smack. <laughs> yeah. I'm good. I'm I still is look, look. Well, not anymore. Clearly, I'm crazy. Look, clearly, or the world has just opened up for me in a big way, and I intend to ignore it wholeheartedly right now. Um. Well. Sounds like a healthy. Both effort. of those answers are correct. And you won't be able to do that because your avatar is a dick. Excuse me. Ah, uh, you'll figure it out. Oh, thanks. No problem. <laughs> no need to explain things down. No, that'd be too easy, wouldn't it? Uh that would make this whole that would make this whole thing a lot less interesting. And he pulls up in front of a like large hotel. It's obviously in a nice part of the city. Uh, how close is this to my actual house? <laughs> to my actual apartment? Um, it's in the same, it's in the same neighborhood. Although, you know, oh. you recognize this, you recognize this hotel. It was way above your fucking budget. But you know, but you recognize it. And Jeff will roll up, the, roll up his car, step on out, and begin walking straight towards. An... This, straight I'm... towards what? The hotel? No, towards an alleyway on the other side of the hotel. Oh, on the other uh, side of the road. Uh, oh god, they're coming at me. Oh god, uh, they're coming at me. I'm gonna get out. I'm I'm basically waiting to see if he says no, stay in the car. Or he doesn't tell on. you to stay. Oh, okay, cool. I'm following. You're a grown ass <laughs> man. You can make your own. He decisions. walks into an alleyway and you see uh, another man about your age. Wait, hey a second. Isn't that the motherfucker? Hey. So, and, do these, uh, this guy that just walked the fuck up to me, and hey, um, these guys look like the guys I'm supposed your name to call again? about. The, this Asian, this like middle aged Asian dude, literally walks up to you. He's got like this backpack on. And uh, do I see him this... walking up to me? Oh yeah, you totally see him walking up to you. He obviously doesn't hide at all. The fact I'm also, the I'm also there. So if you recognize your waiter, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm also, also there. there. Uh, are these of uh, concern to call the boss? It's up to you. What would you call... Boss, boss, there's a middle-aged Asian guy threatening me. What should I do? Also, He's sure. threatening oh, me with pleasant conversation. The Although the waiter didn't do much. Oh, boy. Hey. I don't oh, remember. you're right. I, do, I was just clearly there at the scene of the crime that you guys... For a part of. Zephy also appears in this scene. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jeffrey walks up and gives you gives Adam like the finger guns. Like, hey, I don't know your name. My name's Jeffrey, by the way. Nice to meet you. Do I know you? Um, well, you know me now. I just introduced myself. My name's Jeff. Nice to meet you. Yeah, cool, cool. That's Leonard. You! And I just pointed him. You wrecked my bar hey hey chill oh, out you wrecked about. shit so mr i what fully intend to, to take you down to the station after this you're probably not gonna arrest that guy i'm sorry um you also lost your job leonard i'm super sorry uh anyways man that's fast. i you mean i disappeared from my job no, I'll explain all this later, okay? I got shit your to job, do. Your job literally Le blew up. That's pretty it's lost. Jeffrey looks at his watch. All right, Adam, you're going to need to stay right there. Um, I don't know how much Martin said he was going to pay you, but Martin's an asshole. How the fuck Martin. do you know my name? Um, he has ways to work. Stencil worry about your. It. All right, this is going to sound too weird. I promise this. This is going to sound way creepier than it, I actually mean it to, but you, sten you're, you stencil your name on your underwear. Anyways. <laughs> Blushes profusely. I'm yeah. just 
I'm just don't worry. I haven't like I have a I, look. I know I'm Japanese, but I don't go through like people's underwear and shit. I'm not. <laughs> anyway, I'm just leaning up against a brick wall. My head is still hurting. I'm just like this is just so weird right now. And he starts checking his watch. Come on, Taxbury. We need them out of there. Two minutes and fifty se- fifty three seconds, fifty two seconds, fifty one seconds. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What the hell are you talking about? You'll find out. I'm so confused. I'm so confused right now, and I and Jeffrey. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, Jeffrey, I don't know how much you know what? about me, but oh. I just saw about what. Yeah, a dude got ripped in half, and it was all terrible. And yeah, it was actually pretty terrible. It's probably yeah, the same life. dude who just the same dude who just killed my head mortician after he got back up off the operating table. Look, I'll explain it all in a second. I'm on a fucking time. Everything will be revealed at the end of the show. And while this is all going on, Jeffrey's digging through his backpack. I can't give a crap about your timetable. I just whoa. watched a man be murdered. Okay, what? seriously. Don't answer. What the fuck is going on? Drugs. I don't know. I feel like That's I'm on a drug trip right now. That would actually... I kind of are. Uh, anyways. A drug trip would be preferable at this point. <laughs> and Jeff will check his watch, then look up, and he'll look directly at this old, like, uh, man in his mid to late 60s. Looks to be a professor type. Walks in into the lounge. And we're going to switch to another individual. Oh boy, <sighs> is it me? Uh no, but you're gonna have you're gonna have an you're gonna have an awesome dynamic entry into the scene. Although half a second does that is that the guy that walks in looks uh you know what are the guys I'm supposed to call about? Do you want to call him? Is he one of the the suspicious guys that looks super suspicious? That I should probably call him out. It's like a sixty. It's like a sixty-eight year old man who's dressed like a fucking high, dressed like a college professor. Super yeah. suspicious. So one of those oh, was yeah. not in an alleyway. Okay. In an alleyway, mind you. So no, we're in an alleyway. No, we're all in an alleyway. Not that guy. Sawyer. Yeah, that guy. You get alleyway. a call from the house building. The house right. building. Jesus Christ. The house. The building. house service. The, the house, house building. building. About a visitor for you. In the lobby. He's referring to himself as a Professor William Tewksbury. Oh my! Or Tewksbury? I don't know how fucking. I will actually that. no. I will say that in the phone. Oh my! <laughs> oh my! Oh. My. Also, by by the way, unrelated. It's, I looked it up, and apparently in Oregon, you can be fired for no reason at all. What? If yeah, your empl- If your employer decides you have to be fired, you're fired. Oh Thank yeah, you. that's something that can happen. Yeah, awesome. well, shit. fuck you, you're gone. So yeah. <laughs> like if, my, my if my head mortician, if my head mortician dies, I guess I'm out of a job. Well, you know, you left the place dirty and full of blood. You're gone. Fuck you. <laughs> so anyway, I mean, I um, get bits of brain play. on the ceiling. Gone. Yes. Anyway, I. So I, uh, in the middle of talking to my uncle Martin about uh, opera and how great it was to see Ben Hepner singing Tristan that one time. I uh, reached for the phone, answered the call, and then say, oh my, when my mentor is apparently visiting me, out of the blue, in a town I don't actually live in. Yeah. That's... Sounds sweet. It, I mean, it, it, it does sound sweet, but it also sounds very suspicious. And I mean... Although, well, no, no, as you know, I mean, I, I'm on a, I'm at a convention for, like, you know, psychiatrists and doctors. He probably visits the same convention and found out that I, you know, stay at the hotel. Yes, that, that sounds plausible. No reason to be alarmed. At all. It's perfectly logical. So I, I hang up the phone, and I turn to Martin and go, uh, well, as it turns out, my former mentor uh, decided to visit me. If, if you would excuse me for a moment. Uh, uh, okay. Yes. No uh, problem. Please, please help yourself to the contents of the mini bar. Uh, it on my tab, of course. Of course, thank you. I uh, I uh, uh, put on my suit jacket again, 
and tie my tie right because you know there's a certain etiquette to be followed. I could just go down like a like a slob. And I go down to the lobby and well expect to see my mentor, Professor what's his name? I forgot. William Tuxbury. Tuxbury, uh, yeah. Uh, how the Tuxbury. fuck is that supposed to be pronounced? <laughs> I've been on <laughs> It's literally a character Tuxbury. it's literally a character from Fraser, just like my guy. Oh, you fucking asshole. Anyways, uh, Tewksbury, yeah. Professor Tewksbury is sitting in the hall. Um, he's actually joined by a woman. Appears to be on the younger side. Um, oh my. Probably like late 20s. He's, uh, she is astoundingly beautiful. She is dressed in a nice, a fine oh. red dress. Well, my, my so first... She like... My first thought upon seeing the two is, oh dear, another one. <laughs> but you know he's he d he had he didn't have much luck with marriages so far but maybe this is the one far be it from me to judge it professor milliner professor milliner uh, actually i'm only a doctor dr mill fuck uh yeah that's it's a, it's a only point. a doctor it's a point. dr yes. milliner <clears throat> Ah, uh, Professor! Ah! Good evening! Uh, uh, well, we haven't seen each other in years, I believe. What what brings you here? Yes, it has been a while. It was rather sudden, actually. I had a patriot of mine that brought me into this. Um, speaking of which, and he'll check his watch. Oh, I, you know, yes? It seems it's about time. Do you want to go collect the other two individuals that will be coming to arrive? <laughs> and the woman that he called nods and begins walking out. She has a very sultry walk, very champ. Uh, anyways, all right. Um, this is going to sound very strong, but I'm going to need you to come across the street with me and have a conversation with a few individuals. I uh, excuse me. Look, I have business I need to attend to. And I need, and I'm asking you politely. Could you just make this easy on me? Why well, I, I'm afraid I can't do that. I have a, I have a guest upstairs, and I have uh, appointments tomorrow. I, I do have to go. I'm to aware. Sleep soon. And... It'll only take ten minutes of your time, and I trust you. It will be very enlightening. Well, I. I, I suppose if it's only 10 minutes, yes, I can. For the sake of friendship, Come I on. can fit you in. Right. Uh, who's, who's your uh, d delightful companion? Lena Wallens, a friend of mine. Yeah, and I extend my hand and go, enchanté. Lena actually already left. Wow! <laughs> um, all right. Romancing the air, I might not we? have heard that, but um, <laughs> when Taxbury oh. looked at his watch, looked at Lena and said, could you go collect the other two people who will be arriving? Lena nodded and walked out of the building. Oh, okay. She out. just walked away. Wow. That's yeah. that's rude. I say that's efficient. Come along. I have better things to do with my time, young man, and I... Come along. Well, yeah. I, 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 yes, Professor. I, I suppose so. <laughs> um, um, may, may I ask, is this another one of your... Uh, uh, flings, or is it something serious again? I'm just asking. I may need a new suit for another wedding. We're not getting married. Ah, that's good. Comforting. That's... No, that would be insulting. Mildly <laughs> anticlimactic. Come along, lad. <laughs> You're a quarter of my age. You should be out pacing the old man. <laughs> he's walking along the street. Well, I'm more like two thirds of your age, but he does not seem to give a number. flying fuck about the traffic and cars seem to stop for him. No. Uh, no, yeah, I, I, yeah well, he's I'm, pretty much the same as when you met him last time. I'm more like two thirds <laughs> of your. I'm more like two thirds of your age, but thanks for the compliment, Professor. Oh dear, the traffic is really quite aggressive That's tonight, nice. isn't it? As I see him just walk past it all without a second thought. Yep. Like there's a car that comes screeching to a halt, like right in, right, right next to him, and nearly bumps into him. He doesn't see fucking phase. 
<laughs> Dear, yeah, I walked past the car. I walked past the the, the car and just. I'm 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 terribly sorry, my good man. I'm he, he seems to be in a hurry. I'm terribly sorry, but just terribly. And I just spend oh, time or it's worth it, boy. <laughs> I like yeah. this guy. We have bigger things to attend to. <sighs> Hi, dog. I have to say, brings you across the street. Professor, I have to say, I have to say, you seem to be very. Is that you? <laughs> you seem to be very, very short-tempered since you went into retirement. Maybe you should go back into practice. I've <sighs> business has come up. We'll address it later. By the way, Jeff, this is Sawyer Phineas Miller. I don't know who your two friends are. I don't particularly. Moving on, he turns around, looks at his watch. One minute and 12 seconds, was it, Jeffrey? One minute and eight seconds. And we're going to switch to another individual who we have not touched for a while. Meanwhile, uh, Mr. Meanwhile... Charles Crow. Okay, but first. Why, hello? Really, really, first. Meanwhile, I fully expect the other two to introduce themselves first. So I will just stand there looking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> just a bit of an update for you, Mr. Crows. What you saw happen defied all sense of. When, when Miss, when Doctor Carlo drank ate that pill, he seemed to have become horrifically strong, horrifically fast. He was punch. He would seem to be punching through walls, throwing tables, dodging lightning bolts that Professor Gailey's was shooting from his fucking crazy electric rod. Uh, at some wow. point, Professor Gailey's brought uh, unfull un unrolled, yes, unrolled, mind you, that's the operating term, his umbrella, which turned into some sort of ornithopter that he used to fly around the school in order to keep up with Dr. Carlo. Fortunately, it seems like nobody was in the school at the time. Huh. That's yeah, a good thing ornithopter As has zero power. shit broke loose. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. I'll go with the steampunk loon. He sounds much more fun. Yeah, that's the guy I'm going with. Hell yeah. And eventually, Professor uh, Professor Gailey's got the upper hand long enough to essentially cattle prod Carlo unconscious. Although Carlo seemed to have been recovering at an unfortunate rate, he took he took Crow into a car and then came blistering down the road at about a hundred miles per hour. Dang. Not much longer after, uh, Carlo and a number of other individuals that seemed. Uh, Joined Dr. Carlo, presumably, in large black bands, we went chasing after you. Gailey's then proceeded to go on a high speed chase where he lost most, except the last individual who Professor Gailey seems to, to occasionally curse and very gentlemanly with you, uh, Dr. Carlo's ability to also drive a car. Huh. So. Essentially, you're driving through downtown Portland at about 100 miles per hour, weaving through traffic with multiple bullet holes in the side of the car. Today's been an interesting day. <laughs> well, I certainly didn't expect today to end this way. I didn't expect this to be like my normal Tuesday. Sounds more like a Monday to me. Get... So, so your research, it... You, you you did it. Uh, amongst a number of other things, my good lad. I had to keep a certain number of my uh, pre previous scientific passions hidden from you for various reasons. I'll explain it later. Uh, he checks his watch. Okay, one minute and three seconds. Oh, goodness. Coming a bit close, aren't you, Jeffrey? All right. And he pulls into a screeching drift into a nut in around a corner. By the way, how do you feel about car crashes, my boy? <laughs> I would rather avoid them. Then you'll probably want to put on your seatbelt. I'll put on my seatbelt incredibly scared. 
<laughs> so, are are you planning to crash? Presumably not, boy, because that might kill us, since we'll probably go rocketing out through the sc- to the front <laughs> screen, killing us instantly on contact with the pavement. But if things go right, we won't be getting into a car crash. In fact, our companion will. If I miss Tannis, over, we're going to die horribly. Cheerio. Uh, good luck. I'm going to need it. <laughs> I retract my previous statement. I would not go with this man. He's a very <laughs> haphazard driver. I would. Holy shit. <laughs> it's like Professor Elemental mixed with way too much chaos. But you, you're, you're right on that dime. Uh, I was, was going to say Doctor Who if played by Vin Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my god, he's horrible. <laughs> I would oh. I would watch the shit out of that. <laughs> well, I'm watching Robert again. and Jessica. Jessica. Yes. Hello. You finish your drive and wind up at the at the address that you were given. It's nearby. It, it's in the ritzier part of, of town. You have to park. You have to park the truck into a back to an alleyway, and. Once you get out of the car, a woman, a beautiful late twenties, walk slinky red dress. Oh my! And oh. you all, Jessica and you've cut out. Yep. Are you both Robert and Jessica? Yeah. That would my be name is Lena, darling. Hi. Now you're. I'm sure you've had a very hard time, Jess. But your Jeffrey's here to help. And he sent me to get you. You just block away. You keep getting out. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's you speak, it... so, you speak so softly and sexily, we can't hear you half the time. No! <laughs> Deep it's, too, that mic. it's too much for us to handle. Yeah. The technology can't so, anyways, it. I understand you've had a very hard time, child. Hmm. But your cousin Jeff, your uncle Jeffrey's just a block away. We'll be taking you right away, Robert. If you'd be so kind to come along, Robert will be a little bit weird, uh, weirded out, but uh, nod any uh, anyway, and start unbuckling himself and getting his med, uh, his med kit as well, because yeah, just. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta fix up Jessica now that now that he can. It's gonna yeah. he, he's gonna address the uh, woman in red and go. Any particular reason why I need to come? You're just so strapping and handsome. No. <laughs> All right. Jessica's gonna. It's like just blood just drying on the side of her face. You know is... well. That looks horrible, child. We'll have that fixed up in just a moment. Lena will check a wristwatch she has. Mutter under her breath. Hmm. Two minutes and 27 seconds. Come on, we have... We're in a bit of a hurry. And she will lead you to... uh, Assuming you follow her, she will lead you to a car. Or, I'm sorry, not a car. A alleyway. Where Jessica will recognize her uncle Jeffrey. Oh, God. Jessica is... A number of uh, other people standing around, including an oh. old man, uh, the other characters. Fucking Doc Brown in the corner. All right. Jessica's going to tear up and then kind of start picking up her face. Picking up her pace, not her face. <laughs> and going... <laughs> yeah, he hit a little bit harder than you thought. And then just <laughs> going yeah, towards... Jesus. Going towards uh, Jeff. Uncle Jeff? <gasps> Jessica! You're okay! Yeah. Oh, I am so glad to see you. <laughs> Come over and give me a hug. I'm, I'm a bit busy here. I, uh, Kurt, God damn timing. Jessica's gonna go and, and give, give her uncle a trembling squeeze and tell um, him that, that John came back. With... One hand, he's still digging in his backpack. His other arm goes around. Oh, Jessica, look, sweetie, I know I'm here to fix a lot of problems. There's a lot of strains going on. You know what? Kind of. I just need, we're going to sort everything out very shortly. 
Wait, is it just okay? I need oh, to work please, a little magic. Tell us. Okay. Just one Wait. second. And he checks his wristwatch again. Wait, is just Jeff? Jeff's yeah. Fine. Oh, great. No, hi, people. He checks his wristwatch. Wristwatch. 48 seconds, three seconds to the show. And he pulls out a music box. Well, he pulls out a box. Please, don't, please don't play that thing. Music box. <laughs> fine. And he walks out to the street, sets it down. Don't you dare. And he takes out this key, begins tapping on the side of it. And under his breath, begins muttering, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. And oh, there is by the a... way, I'm Leo. Uh, give me a second. And there's a strange rhythm to the way he's counting off, <laughs> tapping uh, some kind of turn key on the side of the box. And as he begins to count, there is a strange feeling in all of you. Recognize, recognition of a pattern that's formed. Every beat, there is a person who takes a step. Somebody who, a man taps a cigarette. A person dials a button on the phone. A man closes a door. Every second to this beat. And there's a strange sense of wholeness that comes along. And you're the okay. screeching of a car. And that also seems same or beat. And then he places the key into the box. begins turning. And there's this, another awareness of space around. As we begin to get this picture, this story being told. And it starts with the key turning and music playing out of it. And the music pushes air and it knocks a... And it knocks a piece of paper out of a child's hand. And this paper flows and lands in a person's wheelchair. And once the person bends over, they drop something, a can. And that causes somebody to trip over. Somebody catches that person who trips. And the thing, and they bump into a person carrying with a cigarette in their mouth. That cigarette flies onto a car window shield. And the person notices that the driver notices. And... The windshield wipe turns on the windshield wiper, which knocks the cigarette away. The cigarette then flies into the face of a man of a city worker who has a, a leaf blower in his hands that falls to the ground. Falls over and begins blowing a piece of trash along. Some random bit of debris. Somebody runs over. Somebody steps on and trips. And that all of a sudden seems to continue going into the pattern and that knocks over a man who's pushing along some a cart of papers printing papers of some kind falls onto the street and you get a vision of the person in the car uh he hits this car runs over the paper and he drops coffee and hot coffee unfortunately lap being swearing and he starts paying attention to the road and as he begins driving through I was being driving through an intersection. A car goes whizzing past, screeching by, and just barely, only just barely, does the do the two cars manage to miss each other? And the unaware driver drives in drives in front of a black van, causing a car crash, and both of them go spiraling out. And Jeff takes out the key, puts it into his pocket, closes the music box, and then the counting stops. All right, gentlemen, we need to go. What the fuck just happened? I'm going to call it. Know. I don't know. I shut my eyes. Well, the it I didn't die, so that's good. Also, hi, I'm Leo. Uh, hi. No, no, I'm cliffhangering it there because I got to go. Aww. All right. See you, dude. Later, Connor. Bye. I hope you Bye. enjoyed the first session. It was a bit, uh, it was a bit more controlled than railroaded. Okay. In the future, it's going to be more freeform. I'm going to talk to each of you later, as Yay. a lot of you are going to get the rundown of how a lot of this shit works. Yay. No, no, right. my ranks in my social. No, my social ranks. But I want to do magic so I can summon. I don't know expensive Cthulhu wine. or whatever. No, I would just I would just conjure up expensive wine and. Wow, I did I literally do. nothing that entire game. <laughs> <laughs> 
back. And anyway. and I did Hello. quite a bit that game. Damn it. With with access to I picked up a lady. Look, with access to world altering magic abilities, I would get myself theater tickets. Access to world altering magical abilities, I would make people recycle. <laughs> Infinidog. Uh, yeah. No. No, I can see Bob going, yes. More work. Leo, Leo thinks if he finds his purpose <laughs> and tries to I become a superhero. I have very big plans um, before anything else. How did you all enjoy the session? It was oh, super yeah. fun! Thanks, yeah, Connor! Yeah. You... yeah, that that was fun. You're I'm really good at slipping good. into various characters. I'm gonna yeah, stop the recording here, though. I'm sad Goodbye, that I lost buddy. my job as a mortician. Goodbye.